When we take care of each other, wonderful things happen. Children thrive, the elderly rejoice, and communities celebrate. OCAF South Africa, a charitable WACAF organization, makes it easy to share the care. All donations are plowed into Sharia compliant investments, while the fruits support a wide variety of charitable causes. Visit okafsa.org.za to discover how your wakaf can bless our community with a legacy of care. exam preparation because we want to produce more scientists, engineers that can solve some of the challenges that our country faced. To our cohort of learners that is joining us online, we have about five to 10,000 learners that are logging on via uh, Oak Hub's YouTube and Facebook platform. Do let us know where you are connecting to us from. We want to know what school you are connecting to us from and let us know in the comments 
from which province you are coming to us from. The session is hosted on OCAP SA's uh, YouTube platform, so you can refer back to this video. So if you have missed out on anything, you can refer back to these videos. So please do give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. Uh, we produce some fantastic content, but my, my, our stats are quite low. We only have about 6,000 subscribers. Please, guys, let's see if we can get that up to 7,000 today. So share, subscribe this video. We're now going to be calling on someone that's, uh, that's been very instrumental in having the session hosted at South Peninsula High School. And I think we're very excited about this program. We've been conducting this program for the past two or three years, the online version of this workshop. We've gone to KwaZulu-Natal, we've gone to Pretoria, we've gone to Johannesburg, and I'm very happy that we're doing this for the first time here in Cape Town, and I'm going to be calling on South Peninsula's principal, Mr. Zaid Baker. Good morning, everyone, in the hall here this morning, and then also to the class of 2024, the matric class of 2024, all over South Africa. Thank you, Asnaini. I'm going to start all over. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, firstly, just a warm welcome to all of you here in the hall today. And you may have mentioned the names of the schools that we have here today. We have uh, Livingston, we have Spine Road, and uh, also South Peninsula High School. You are the matric class of 2024. In fact, I want to I say this, your matric year starts now. Because I firmly believe, and I think that you believe, that you will be in matric, and that's why you are here this morning. Also to um, our grade, our matric 2024 students from all over South Africa, uh, welcome. I'm sure that you are going to be wowed today by our presenter, Muhammad Kota. Uh, he is a renowned uh, maths presenter, uh, well known throughout South Africa, and uh, from what I am also uh, gathering, um, he gets students going. And that is why the session today and tomorrow, I'm sure, is going to benefit all of you. Students, just remember this. You are the future of our country. We all know that the subject of maths, one of the important skills is problem solving. And when we look at the issues and the problems that we have in our country, we so need we dynamic leaders who can solve those problems. And I believe a subject okay. like maths okay, no is going to help us solve those problems. And so I wish you well for the two sessions, today and tomorrow. And I believe that when you leave here tomorrow afternoon, you will feel satisfied. And I'm sure there will be that confidence uh, when you write your maths paper one and your, and your maths paper two. Thank you very much. So thank you to Mr. Baker for that address and he's been working tirelessly with the IT department and the rest of the staff to ensure that uh, we have a um, successful session today. We're now going to be calling on uh, a member of the provincial parliament uh, Mr. Khalid Said, and you'll be addressing us. He's very passionate uh, about education and he's one of our youthful leaders. We call on Khalid Said. Thank you very much to Hasnain, and let me greet each and every one of you. Good morning. Morning, morning, morning. You sounding, are you, yeah. are you awake? Are you ready? You're going to be. Good morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So firstly, my, I've been to the school before. Uh, let me greet uh, our dear principal, Mr. Zaid Baker. I think this is the second time in the year that I'm here. I remember addressing, I think it was in was it March or 
June the 16th, where I addressed the assembly at the school. So some of you SP learners may still be remembering. I don't want to test your knowledge on what we spoke about, but I'm sure you still remember. And that will come up when you are writing your history examinations, I'm sure. Uh, so let me greet uh, Mr. Baker and thank him firstly for being the hosting school, but also keeping in line with the tradition of South Peninsula High School, of striving for excellence and empowering our learners. Uh, I also want to greet um, uh, Mr. Najjar, who is also here, one of the stalwart teachers in the Western Cape. Uh, so here you have got treasures with you, beyond just the tuition that is going to be offered by Mr. Kota, uh, who has also done excellent work across our province. Uh, been used in various capacities. So here yeah, there's a treasure of experience that you have. You are very, very lucky. And then, very importantly, the leadership of the, of the hosting organization, OCAF, South Africa, Hasnain, and his entire team, uh, with Samit and others. This is an excellent initiative. I think for us, doing our oversight in provincial parliament. I want to make it clear firstly, I'm not part of government. Our role is to make sure that government does the right thing. We are members of provincial parliament. So I serve in the education portfolio. We monitor the work of the department. We monitor the work of the ministers when it comes to education issues and give guidance where things are going wrong see where things can be strengthened and experiences that we pick up at our schools working with our principals and teachers and with parents that assists us one of the issues major issues that we have picked up um, and challenges has been that of mathematics where far too many learners whether it be pressure from schools or pressure at home or pressure from themselves are deciding not to take up mathematics as a subject of choice, especially pure maths. And it's normally because of the, there's a psychological block that starts to develop to say, no, it's very difficult, it's going to make it tough for me, I won't be able to progress. And that's a big challenge that we've been experiencing and raising consistently and calling on the department both at the national and provincial level to bring in programs to encourage you to perform in mathematics and to make mathematics something that is a subject of choice. Now you've taken the first step, regardless of what government does or NGOs do, by being here, by choosing mathematics. Today's a Saturday. You could have been out there preparing for the rugby for tonight. Not to say that you mustn't watch the rugby. We're all going to enjoy the rugby. I'm not sure who's going to support the All Blacks and who's going to support the Springboks. But that's a debate for another day. But uh, you could have been out there enjoying yourself on a Saturday morning. But you chose to come here to South Peninsula High School. Those who are online, I think there are what? 10,000? 10,000 10, learners online. Welcome to each and every one of you from across the country, including you who are here. You've taken the first step. That's the dedication that's required. It's a Saturday. It's easy to say during the week or even a week evening because you, your mind is focused on schooling. But you've taken the first step to come on a weekend. It's never easy. And it's not like you're coming for a set tuition. No, every Saturday I go to this private tutor. That's there. People have those facilities. But here it's a once-off opportunity, and you've taken it with open arms. I think that's, that's extremely important. But also we have realized, and as both speakers have pointed out, as Hasnain has pointed out, and Mr. Baker has pointed out, our economy at the moment requires 
requires a workforce, not only a workforce, but thinkers who are schooled in mathematics. And mathematics goes beyond just, uh, I need to go into a career of accounting, I need to be an engineer, that's important, yes. I need to work with numbers per se, yes. Mathematics becomes important in that regard. However, mathematics also becomes important even if you are not going to work with numbers. Because it gives you the critical, critical skills. I don't really work much with numbers today. Okay, I do when we look at budgets, but generally, in the political space, you have to apply your mind critically and give leadership and guidance. And I found that having done at the time, when I was at school, it was higher grade maths. That having continued with maths higher grade up until the very end, now assists me today. It develops that critical thinking. So the, the decision you have taken is an important one and we need you. Our society needs you, our country needs you, government needs you, the state needs you. Each and every sector needs learners such as yourselves. And the schools that you are coming from are not necessarily the schools in the leafy suburbs that have got the advantages. So take this opportunity. But we want to thank OCAF SA. Because, yes, the state can do what it's supposed to do, and we'll put pressure on the state to do what it must do. But without organizations such as yourselves, we'll not be able to achieve what we need to. This is the kind of work that we want the non-governmental sector to be involved in, and we hope that you encourage others to also assist and to come on board. And for those who are watching out there, who have got expertise with maths tuition, Reach out to OCAF SA. Businesses that are out there, reach out to OCAF SA and see how you can be part of this very, very exciting program. So thank Amen. you very much. Everything of the best. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here. Amen. Amen. Come. We need to fire up. So yes, indeed. So OCAF provides support to our communities. We've got a host of sustainable projects. Some of these projects include walls, cataract operations, and this mass upgrade pro project, we've been hosting this since 2016 to assist our learners. We want you to achieve the best. Uh, and I truly believe that South Peninsula High School is a center of excellence. So from one center of excellence to another personality of excellence in the education um, field, and we're going to call on Mr. Najjar. Uh, he's a retired principal of Spinot High. And he is a man of excellence. So give him a round of applause. Mr. Abdullah, Mr. Kolta, Mr. Sayed, and Mr. Baker. Um, it is truly a privilege for me to be here this morning. I got a phone call from Mr. Baker last night to say, you have to be at school at quarter to nine. Just you know, like a good in. student that I remain, <laughs> I listen. I think we are extremely Lions privileged, you are field extremely field. privileged to be part of this program. You know, at this very moment, please do not forget all those school-going children who are under fire, who do not have this privilege and this right that has been taken away from them by people who's got no concern for human life. So keep them in your prayers and also think of the privileges that you have. We would like to thank OCAF South Africa for this wonderful initiative to ensure that especially our marginalized children get extra assistance in mathematics, the gateway subject to many, many lucrative professions. Now, we know that education in South Africa is not equal. And this is an attempt to bring up to speed, especially learners, 
from our communities, the formerly and still disadvantaged community. And these initiatives by organizations like OCAF goes a long way to prepare our children for to be competitive in the world out there. Now remember what you're going to do today and tomorrow, paper one today and paper two tomorrow. It must really excite you to go and sit this evening with paper one and see that you do understand everything that was done today. It is not coming to extra classes and not doing anything at home that is going to prepare you for matric or for the final examinations next year. It's how much effort you are going to put in every day. Maths is a subject that, it's an easy subject, as Mr. Kota will attest. If you love what you're doing and if you put an effort in every day of the week, that will guarantee you success. You're not working to pass at the 30%. You must work to pass at 80%. And any mark below 80%, you should consider as being a failing, failing mark. So push your boundaries. The queues are extremely long for the 50 percenters at university. If you get over 80 percent, you will be in the front of those queues for your profession, for your dreams. So Mr. Abdullah and Okaf and South Peninsula would like to say thank you very, very much for this opportunity. The opportunity will only be worthwhile. It depends on yeah. how much effort you are going to put in. Thank you so much and enjoy the weekend. And by the way, sorry, we all support South Africa tonight. Okay? We say thank you to Mr. Najah for taking time out to be with us. We hope that you will join us tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have someone very special. His name is Rory Sang. He took part in our workshop last year. And as a result of attending our workshop, he scored 100% in mathematics. He's from Limpopo. How's the round of applause there? So he's from Limpopo and he's studying actuarial science at UCT. So please do come tomorrow and do log on our online um, audience. Um, he will be joining with us and giving you some sense of motivation. So now we're going to be calling on Mr. Kota. All of the talking is out of the way. It's time to get the show on the road. So Mr. Kota is the match facilitator for the session today. Mr. Kota eats, sleeps, drinks, and he solves mathematical problems in his sleep. He's been our implementing agent uh, since 2015. And to call him on, we're going to be called... We're going to be logging in uh, his launch sequence. So, Samit, roll the tape. Mr. Kota, the floor is yours. Let's, let's give it a go quickly.
There we go. Right, good morning boys and girls. Uh, nice to see you guys bright and fresh and early here on a Saturday morning here in Cape Town. We've, uh, it's our first show, we're bringing it here to the Cape. And uh, we've been doing this program over the past eight years in all the different provinces and it's actually amazing to be here in Cape Town and we look forward to engaging with you for the next two days. We're gonna be one family, guys. So forget about everything, forget about home, Forget about the Gatsby, forget about the Kota, forget about everything else. Your stomach today is going to be filled. We're going to quench your thirst with math. I know for the next two days, and you're going to be sleeping math, drinking math, eating math for the next two days. So boys and girls, welcome, welcome, welcome. What's required before we kick off the session? Your scientific calculator, writing pad, pen, ruler, and your snacks. Okay. So let's get the show on the road. I'd like to welcome all the learners from all over South Africa, teachers, learners, professors, uh, mathematicians, everyone here to the show. I know at this point in time, at this point in time, you're thinking to yourself that, you know, math is a bore, math is difficult. We're going to show you, we're going to be going through a full two-day revision to prep you fully for the final exams. So whether you are 20 percenter, um, okay, don't lift your hands. Whether you are th uh, 30 percenter, 50 percenter, 70 percenter, 90 percenter for the next two days is going to be for you. We're going to try and go through every single concept. Today, paper one, tomorrow, paper two. Uh, all the formalities took about 25 minutes, so we, we can see the program there on the screen. We're going to kick off now. I think, are we still going to kick off till 10.30 or we're going to push it till uh, half an hour later uh, due to formalities? We'll see that as we go. We're going to kick off with algebra. We're going to go for break. We're going to come back. We're going to do functions and number patterns. We'll go for lunch and we'll end up today with finance and probability. Tomorrow's show, analytics. Right? Analytics tomorrow, trigonometry, data handling. Your data handling is easy. I think that, that, that's your, one of your easiest topics. And trigonometry, trig graphs, and obviously Euclidean. And that's going to give us our 300 marks or our 200 marks for our final exams. So grade 11s, I hope you guys are ready. Take, I hope you guys are hydrated. You guys got your uh, energy drinks and you've got your waters. Stay hydrated. Let's get the show on the road. So let's take a deep breath and hoosa. Let's get started. Okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Grade 11s, let's get started. Um, we're going to start off with paper one with our algebra. Now, in algebra, we're going to start off with your quadrant. Let's first go. Let's walk through algebra. What do you need to know in order to master your exam? The first thing you need to know is your quadratic equations. Right. Solve for x. All the different forms of quadratic equations. And we're going to go through all the different types of quadratic equations. Let's see. We need solve for x. Yes or no? The second one we need to know is completing the square using the quadratic formula. Squaring both sides. Am I talking Japanese? No. Right. Then we need to know quadratic inequalities. Besides our equations, we need to know inequalities. I'm going to show you shortcuts. I'm going to show you hacks. Guys, this is going to be a bumper session. You guys are going to love today and tomorrow. Inequalities. Then we've got simultaneous equations. Then you've got exponents. You've got rational, then you've got exponential equations. Make a note of all of this. This is your checklist. Exponential equations, simultaneous equations, and then you've got rationalizing the denominator. Rationalizing the denominator. So welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Keep the comments coming from all over the country. Rationalizing the denominator. Now, guys, in your exam, I'm actually sitting with a national paper here. You're looking at about 24 marks plus another 18, 24 plus 18, 42 marks on algebra. 
Now, guys, boys and girls, your algebra is your engine of mathematics. If you cannot do algebra, you can't do math. If you can't do algebra, you can't do functions. If you can't do algebra, you can't do number patterns. If you can't do number patterns, if you can't do algebra, you can't do probability, you can't do finance, you can't do any topic. You need to make sure that your algebra is on point and that's what we're going to make sure that it is on point for the first session. Okay, so let's get cracking. Let's get cracking. The first thing is factorization and many of you still have a problem factorizing. Right? Factorizing where the coefficient of x squared is greater than 1. So let's have a look at this, guys. Let's have a look at this. I'm going to erase this on the side. Remember, this is recorded. And by tomorrow, this entire session will be up on YouTube. On Hilal TV, you can go home. You can watch this over and over and over again. So welcome to all our Cape Town schools that have managed to come here online. Let's get cracking. Let's look at a situation like this where the question says solve for x. Right. Let's take a scenario like this. One of the ones that came out in the exam, 2x plus 1 into 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, I know this is a very basic one. This is a level 1. We're going to do, remember the show, this program is for everybody. So whether you're level 1, level 2, level 3, we're here to make sure that you know your work. So let's get started. This is a quadratic equation. Your right-hand side must be zero. It's only worth three marks. We're going to pick up the pace. This is the easiest one that you're going to see. Right. Please do not go out and multiply this out. It's already factorized. Unless you had a number on the side, your right-hand side must always be zero. So this is already factorized. So what do we do? We got our two factors equal to zero. So 2x plus 1, our first factor equal to zero or 3x minus 4 equal to 0. I think you're all following me by now, right? Remember, we want family. Doesn't mean I'm sitting here, I'm going to look at you, I'm going to talk to you. you. We're all humans, we're not robots, right? I'm going to talk to you, you need to respond to me. Give us the energy that we require for today and for tomorrow. Right, what's your first name? Aritza. Arij. How do you spell it? R A A R A R J Arij, mashallah, mashallah. And your name? Zakir. Your name? Ashik. Ashik, Zakir, and Arij. Right. These are our first three learners that are sitting right in the front. Hello, South Africa. These are our three learners here. From which school are you? South SP. Spine Road, mashallah. Right, so let's go. Spine Road in Mitchell's Plain. Mitchell's complain. <laughs> here we go, here we go, here we go. Some even for a flavor, madam. Some tomatoes for a party. Let's solve for X, brah. Right, so 2X plus 1 is equal to 0. Love it in Cape Town. As the name says, we speak the Queen's English. A state look, my bro. Alice is net dead look. Right, so here we go. X is equal to negative a half or 3X minus 4 equals to 0. 3X is equal to 4. Divide by 3, divide by 3. X is equal to 4 over 3. And there we go. We got our first two answers. Are we good? Easy, ne? Easy stuff. Right. What happens? Let's pick up the pace. Let's pick up the pace. And let's give you a scenario that looks like this, guys. What if I told you 8x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals to 0? Now, grade 11s, many of you go and you use the quadratic formula. You will get it wrong. Because it's a perfect trinomial. It can be factorized. So, the question you may ask, if I use the quadratic formula, will I get it right? No. If I go and complete the square, yes, I'll get x. Will I get it right? No. You've got to factorize. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to factorize. Now, many of you don't know how to factorize this. Right, we still need to. I know you've got certain methods. I'm going to show you a quai method here. Right. So we're going to use what I call Mr. Snotcob. <laughs> you know, Mr. S you know what is a Snotcob? Some of you have got little brothers or sisters. You know those little Snotcob lighties, right? So there's the nose, 
There's the mouth. Now a snot cop, he's always crying. And he's always got snot going into his mouth. I know this is such a morbid example, right? So there's Mr. Snot cop. How do we use Mr. Snot cop to factorize this? So watch here. We got eyes, nose, mouth. So let's go here. Let's erase that. Let's draw Mr. Snot cop here. Now, please do not go and write snot cop in your exam. Your teacher will put WTF. What the frog. Right. So let's go. So now we're going to put the eyes, 8 and 15. The first and the last are your eyes. The nose is a cross multiplication. And the mouth is minus 2. So there we go. Eyes, nose, mouth. What are we short of, guys? The tears and the snot. Am I right? So the tears are the factors, two factors. And when you cry, your tears go down your face. Your tears don't go across your face. If your tears are going across your face, Krotus Kiri is here. Go get yourself checked up. There's something wrong with you. So give me two factors of eight. Four and two. Yes or no? Give me two factors of 15. Five and three. That's why we got the nose to cross multiply to get the snot that drips into the mouth. Yummy. Butter, brah. <laughs> Butter, pal. No, no. Let me keep quiet. Four times three is 12. Two times five is 10. We cross multiply. Are you following? Ashik? Zakir? Are we quiet? Give me a thumbs up. A reach? Negative 12 plus 10 gives me a minus 2. Am I right? When added or subtracted. And a negative times a positive is what? And what's my last sign? Negative. So we don't think we're right. We know we're right. So what do we do? That's my first bracket. Four, five. Four, five. There's my second bracket. Two, three. Two, three. We need x squared, so x and x. Okay. Now which one gets the positive? Which one gets the negative? You can't go, you know what? Inky, pinky, ponky. Do you guys still say inky, pinky, ponky? Into millennials. Gen. What are you guys? Gen X, Gen Zs. What are you, Arij? Gen Z? You don't know what you are? <laughs> 5 times 2 is what? 5 times 2 is 10. What do I need? A positive. 3 times 4 is 12. What do I need? A negative. And there we go, fully factorized, using Mr. Snotkop. Right. So now we solve for x. 4x plus 5 is equal to 0. Or 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Let's solve for x. 4x is equal to negative 5. Guys, are you watching? Learners from the school that I'm at, Roshni Islamic School in Gauteng, Johannesburg, South Africa. I hope you guys are following. This is for you guys too. And remember, you guys are writing in two weeks' time. And we're all writing a provincial paper. So we need to make sure that we know everything. Kaufela. A to Z. We need to master every corner. We're going to come go through some heavy stuff just now, but we're going to love it. Okay, so there we go, fully factorized. There's, there are your two factors. Okay, so we use Mr. Snotkop. I'm going to go through it one more time. I'm going to go through it one more time, and I'm going to give you one to do on your own. And let's see if you can apply Mr. Snotkop. And remember something, guys. This year is worth five marks. Listen. You take your mark allocation and you divide it by two is equal to your time. So how many minutes do you have? Two and a half minutes. So your, your 100 mark exam paper, you divide by two, gives you 50 minutes. In 50 minutes, you should finish your entire two-hour paper. You should be able to do your exam paper twice. So you don't think you get 100%. You know you get 100%. Let's try. Let's go, let's go. Let's go through this one again. Quickly, and I'm going to go through it a little bit faster than I went through it now. So guys, follow. Let's follow. So here we go. 8x squared minus 2x minus 15. Solve for x. It's a perfect trinomial. So we've got to use Mr. Snotkop. So let's use Mr. Snotkop. So let's do it here on the side. So in the exam, all you do on the side, in pencil, say factors of 8, factors of 15, cross multiplied, to give me minus 2. Are we all okay? I'm going to put a tick. Give me a thumbs up. You understood what I did? Good. Well done. What do I do? Two factors of 8. 4 and 2. Two factors of 15. 5 and 3. Are we all okay with that? What do I do now? Is that the end of my problem? 
No, what must I do? Cross multiply. Four times three, 12. Two times five, 10. Negative 12 plus 10 to give me minus two. Negative times positive is a negative and my last sign is a negative, so I know I'm right. Four, five, two, three. So here goes, here goes, here goes. Four, five, two, three. So four, five, two, three. X, that's a squared. X and X. Which one gets, which bracket gets the positive? Which one gets the negative? Arij, we start from the two next to each other. Five times two is 10. What do I need? Positive. Three times four is 12. What do I need? Negative. Bada bing, bada boom. Game over. Yes or no? Are you ready to do one on your own? You sure? Okay. Let's see. Let's see, South Africa. Let's see if you can do one on your own. So here goes. 6x squared minus x. Remember in the mouth, you don't put an x. This is minus 2. This one here obviously will be negative 1. 6x squared minus x minus 15 is equal to 0. I hope this one works. Is it? Let's check. Give it a go, give it a go, give it a go. Let's work it out. Let's see all the comments coming in. Let's see all the co comments coming in. So we go back to restream. Keep your comments coming in. Munir Samsuddin, I see you guys coming in. That checks out. Guys, if you are not clear from wherever you are streaming from, it's your internet connection. We are boosting here on over 200 megs. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's check. Let's see if you can use Mr. Snotcop and get the answer here. Mr. Let's Kota, see we are we going to have a Gatsby today? Yes. Yes. Can you believe it? It's the first time we're vibing in person, not virtually in some little dungeon locked away. We're in person, live, and in full. Absolutely. Effect. Absolutely. It's always been great. We've, uh, imagine myself and Asanain, we've been working together for eight years. This is the first time I came to Cape Town and I actually met him personally. <laughs> Normally okay, we were so online we together. So here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Three, two, five, three. Did you guys do that? Was that, were these your factors, guys? If these were your factors, you would be correct, Tomundo. Let's check out Jimmy Jones. The show is on fire. Yes, sir. Yes. It won't be a playback. It, it is recorded and it will go up onto uh, OCAF website by tonight. In fact, it's live. Yes, it's on YouTube. So if you missed out on anything or you fell asleep during the session, you there can, we go. You can log on to OCAF South Africa on the YouTube platform as well as OCAF SA.org. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Jazakallah, sorry to cut you short there. As a name, we are pressed for time today. 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 5 is 10. Did you get that? Yes. You need negative 1. So that must be minus 10 plus 9. Yes or no? Positive times negative is a... And what's your last sign? Do you think you're right or you know you're right? Ah, what's your name? Yeah, yeah. Kilim. Kalem. Hey, welcome, Kalem. Away on... Let's go. Three, five, two, three. So let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Three, five, two, three. And we got X and X. Right, Caleb? You got that? And then five times two is ten. Caleb, what did I need? Positive or negative? Negative. Three times three is nine. What did I need? Positive or negative, Caleb? Positive, boss. So what do I have? Three X minus five is equal to zero. Or 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. 3x is equal to 5. Divide by 3, divide by 3. 5 over 3. Guys, I promise you, if you cannot solve for x here, go and drop to maths, diet maths. You know, maths light. Don't do math if you can't solve for x here at the bottom. And here we go. Did you all get it right? Give yourselves a nice round of applause. You used the slot method. Well done. Well done, well done. Right. 
Now, let's just do one. Now, what if we couldn't factorize it? Obviously, we know, we, I'm going to go through this a bit fast. It is year-end prep. Remember, this is not a workshop. This is one big study session. So what you would have been doing at home, we're just doing it to, together collectively. So after, by tomorrow, you must be so excited. You must be ready to write your paper on Monday morning. You think that can be done? Inshallah. Say Amin. Amin. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, now, I'm going to give you one here. Let's clear the frame. What if I told you 2x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals to 0? Solve for x, and it says correct to two decimal places. This is your instruction. That is your instruction to what? To use the formula. I'm only doing one of this, guys. I don't need to do 50 examples of the same thing. We're all intelligent species. I would like to think. Right. So let's go. Let's go. Do you want to try it on your own? You know what you're going to go, go and do immediately. X is equal to minus B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So X is equal to what is A? What is B? What is C? Oh, yes. And we've got to do our favorite section. I know the one that you guys love the most. And you know what that is? Nature of roots. Um, look at the face. Look at their faces, man. They pull their faces. That's A. That's B. That's C. Don't worry, you're going to love nature of roots. When we do nature of roots, we're going to dala it like a pro. <laughs> we are dalaing maths these two days, brah. Let's go. Minus B. Minus, minus 5. Plus, minus the square root of B squared. Minus 5 squared. Minus 4. A is what? 2. What is C? Minus 6. All over 2A. Don't mess this up in the exam. These are marks for Mahala. Marks for gem. 5 plus minus the square root of. That would be 25. Negative times negative is a positive. 4 times 2 is 8 times 6 is 48. All over 4. I'm going to move over to the side because I don't have space. So x is equal to 5 plus minus the square root. 25 plus 48, 20, 40, 60, 73. All over 4. So x is equal to 5 plus or 5 minus. Correct to two decimal places. Let's use our calculators. 5 plus square root 73 equals. Let's divide that by 4 equals. 3,386. But they say correct to two decimal places. 3,39. Did you all get that? Well done. Or x is equal to 5 minus the square root of 73 equals, divide that by 4 equals, boom. Minus 0, 0,89. Negative 0, 0,89. Do we have that? Yes or no? Well done. You got 5 marks on the top. You got 3 marks here. You got your first 8 marks. For some of you, you only get eight out of a hundred. No, no, I'm lying. We're gonna we we're not like like they said, we are this is destination distinction. We are not aiming to pass, we are aiming for a distinction. You always get you always get 20% less than what you aim for. You aim for hundred, you'll get about 80. You aim for 80, you'll get 60. Some of you only aim for 50. Well, figures. Right. We need to aim for 120. We need to know double the amount of work to score 100% in our exam. And that's what we're here to do. So let's clear the frame. Right. Now we're going to do squaring both sides. Now watch this one. And I'm going to use the one from a past paper, guys. I'm going to use the one from a past paper. Just watch what we're, going to, what we're going to do with this one. Have a look at this one. Right. So let's go down here. Let's go down there. Check this one out. You've seen this one in the exam. The square root of x minus 1 plus 3 is equal to x for 4 marks. Right, put your pens down. Put your pens down. What do we want to do in this problem, guys? What do we want to do? We only want to keep the third sign on the left-hand side. Everything else moves. So third sign and brackets, it's like super glue. It's stuck. So you know in the normal law of life, what stuck stays, what stuck stays, What's loose moves, right? 
What do we mean stuck? Stuck, square root, third sign, or brackets? Or fraction? What do we mean loose, positive or negative? That moves. So that's going to move over to that side. So watch what we, what we do. What's stuck stays. What's stuck stays. What's loose moves. Positive three will come onto the other side is negative three. I'm going to put a tick there. You all understand that? Good. We need to get rid of the square root sign. So what's the opposite of square root? Square. So we square the side. Do not go and square each term. You square the entire side. Are you listening to me? Grade 11s, are you following? Boys and girls there at the back, can you guys hear me and see clearly here? Are we all, do we get a thumbs up from the back? Thumbs up from the back. Wow, lovely. Here we go. Square and square root will cancel. X minus 1 is equal to. Be careful. Be careful. We square the first term, X squared. We square the second term, plus 9. We need the middle term. We need the middle term. Here's the shortcut. Do you guys know the shortcut? Or do you guys break it up into two brackets? You generally break it up into two brackets. No. You don't do anything with it. You generally stop here. Oh, and I'm just asking. You multiply the two inside the brackets and you times it by two. So negative three times x is minus three x times two is minus six x. Yes or no? Square the first to get the first. Square the second to get the last. Multiply the 2 and times it by 2. Minus 3 times x is minus 3x. If I multiply the 2 and I times it by 2, I just double it. I get minus 6x. Yes or no? Are you all following? Can I put a tick here? You all understand that? Onliners, are we good? Let's check our onliners. Onliners, are we good? Mpo, Malesa. Got it. Yebo, Batabile. <laughs> yeah, just don't sneeze. You might just <laughs> shoot the snot. So let's go, let's go, let's go. X minus 1 is equal to this. We are solving now for X. Guys, are you following? Let's do this. Now, all I'm doing, I'm swapping both sides. Watch here. Okay, let's do it this way. I'm going to put 0 is equal to X squared because I want to keep X squared positive. Minus 6X plus 9. Plus x will come on the other side as minus x. Minus 1 will come on the other side as plus 1. So 0 is equal to x squared. Minus 6x minus 1x minus 7x. Plus 9 plus 1 is plus 10. So a, b equals a or a equals b is the same thing. So I'm just going to swap the two sides around. Is equal to 0. You don't need to change the signs. So now let's do that, is equal to 0. Let's factorize x, x. Our factors of 10 to give you a 7, 5 and 2, negative, negative, to get a negative and a positive. So x minus 5 is equal to 0, or x minus 2 is equal to 0, x is equal to plus 5, or x is equal to plus 2. You can go back, your teachers will tell you to go and check the validity where the left-hand side is equal to right-hand side in school. You can go and do that check. But that's how we do the problem. Take this one down, guys. Take this one down. I'm going to give you one to do on your own. I'm going to give you one to do on your own. Let's see how sharp are you. If you've understood this. I hope you've understood it. Lucky, are we good? Kaylin? We quiet. We all quiet. Double D, double Dolly. As much tail like my bro. Yo, Mr. K, we dialing match today. Yo, where you come from, Mr. K? Right, let's see if you guys can crack this one. Do you guys want an easy one or you want a hard one? One like this or one more? To give you, you want a heavyweight or a lightweight? Heavyweight. You sure you want a heavyweight? Wallahi. Wallahi. Yeah, Habibi, wallahi, please. <laughs> Habibi, you want the heavyweight. Okay, let me give you a lightweight first and then give you a heavyweight, right? Right, so here's a lightweight. Square root. 
x plus 2 plus 4 is equal to x. Yalla Habibi. Dala. Dala with tajweed. Come, guys, take this one down. Do the next one. And then I'm going to give you a heavyweight after this. Let's check our comments. So you guys are taking this one down. Let's check our live learners. Is Matt's matching today? Are we matching? Lekas was a cracker. Even for a flavor, tomatoes for a party. <laughs> Yo, Meram. Come, guys. Don't be boring. A problem? Ah, you're done. When you're done, put your, put your pen down so I know you are finished. A problem like this shouldn't take you more than 60 seconds. If you're taking longer than 60 seconds to do this, FYI, you're going to fail nicely, beautifully. <laughs> you know when you know you failed nicely? When your report card looks like Audi rings. You know, Olympic rings. Then you know you've done a good job. You failed stunningly. Right, let's see. You should be done. Right, so the square root of x plus 2 is equal to x minus 4. Yes or no? Right or wrong? Right or left? Left. <laughs> let's go. Square this side, square that side. So that and that will cancel. x plus 2 is equal to x squared, square the first term, square the next term, plus 16. Multiply the 2, minus 4x, and double it, minus 8x. You have to multiply the 2 and times it by 2 to get your middle term. So x squared minus 8x plus 16 minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. x squared minus 8 minus 1 minus 9x. 16 minus 2 is 14. Hey, what's going on here? Where is my internet? What's going on there? Plus 14 is equal to 0. We factorize this. Equal to 0. x, x. Factors of 14 to give you a 9. 7 and 2, negative, negative. x minus 7 equals to 0. x minus 2 equals to 0. x is equal to plus 7. x is equal to 2. Yebo, yes. Yebo, yes. Right. Well done. Well done. Okay, now you want the heavyweight. Now you want the heavyweight. You want the Mike Tyson. <laughs> you want to get, to smash your boy. The next one is going to smash your teeth out. <laughs> the next one is Khabib. Gonna smash your boy. <laughs> ha! Whew. Eh, eh. The next one. Eh, she's a problem. Hi, Bo. Let's go. Six marks. Solve for X. Uh, this one here is Tyson. Come, guys. Come, onlineers. Come, onlineers. This is a final exam question. This is about the heaviest that you could see in squaring both sides. Then we're going to do completing the square after this. Then we're going to do completing the square. How are we doing there, Sanayin? How's the comments coming in there? How are the Owens vibing? A Gatsby size equations, Kanala. But we're definitely going to have that Gatsby today, Mr. Kota. It's vying down. It's vying down. From where? Golden Dis? The is going to win. No Gold. quarters today. The book is going to win today. That's a fact. And yeah, we're going to have a Gatsby. For those of you from the rest of South Africa that don't know a Gatsby, a Gatsby was invented in Cape Town. It originated in Cape Town. It's over 300 years old. It's one long roll filled with chips and steak and salad. You're making me hungry here, my bro. My stomach is burning here. It's a quarter on steroids. 
Looking fine today, sir, Jimmy Jones. Awe, awe. Who's that, my old? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's dial others like a boss. What's stuck stays, what's loose moves. Okay, I hope you guys did this in your first step. Negative 2 square root 2x plus 5 is equal to x minus 8. Did you all get that one right? Good. Now don't get too excited. You only got one mark. You didn't pass yet. Right. Now, watch here. Now, watch here. Now we square both sides. We square this side. We square that side. So negative 2 squared. Negative squared is positive. 2 squared is 4. The square and the square root will cancel. 2x plus 5 is equal to square, square the first term, square the second term, multiply the 2 minus 8x times 2 is minus 16x. And there we go. Putting a tick there. Did you all get that right? Yes. It's all. I was checking if you guys were paying attention. Astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwata. Astaghfirullah, 8 squared is 64. Astaghfirullah. When they, when they are paying attention and they are correcting me, brah, then I know they vase. Hey, Kota, there's not slap start, eh? We are awake here. <laughs> no, they're wide awake here. Hassanin, they are wide awake. So let's go. 4 times 2. 4 times 2x is 8x. Plus 4 times 5 is 20 is equal to x squared minus 16x plus 64. There we go. So x squared minus 16x plus 64 minus 8x. I'm taking it on that side. Minus 20 is equal to 0. x squared minus, eight, uh, minus 16 minus 8 minus 24x. 64 minus 20, 40 is equal to 0. Factorize that. 44. <laughs> 64 minus 20, 44 is equal to 0. X, X. Factors of 44 to give you a 24. 22 and 2, ne? Ne? X minus 22 is equal to 0. X minus 2 is equal to 0. X is equal to 22. Or X is equal to 2. Yeah, boy, yes. Well done. Now check your validity for each one. One might be valid, one might not be valid. Check that left hand side is equal to right hand side after substituting. Now, one of the questions that came out in a past year paper, also to do with the squaring a binomial, is this next one here. It's a higher order question. Maybe you guys have seen it, maybe you haven't. So get ready. Brace yourself for the next question. Check this one out. Check this one out. If x plus 1 over x is equal to, let's say, 8, find the value of x squared plus 1 over x squared. Do you guys know how to do this one? Have you seen this one before? Grade 11s, talk to me. Have you seen this one before? Do you know how to do it? It's worth five marks. We're going to do some higher order questions as well. Even with the factorization. I'm going to do one more higher order question with regard to factorization after this. We did squaring both sides. We did the quadratic formula. We did Mr. Snotkop. Right, watch this. Watch this. Let me do it for you. I'd love to give you time to do it on your own, but we don't have the time, the liberty of time. Before you know it, today is over. Before. I know it might say, you might be thinking to yourself, yo, till three o'clock, my bro, what must I be doing there for math on a Saturday? I, I promise you, by the time it comes to three o'clock, time is going to be up. You're going to say, Mr. K, carry on till 5, carry on till 8. Let's not watch the rugby tonight. Let's dala man. I got hopes, ne? dreams. So let's go. Shh, watch here. 
x plus 1 over x is equal to 8, find the value of x squared. Now you can't just go square each one, you'll get it wrong. They want x squared plus 1 over x squared, so this is what we do, guys. This is what we do. x plus 1 over x is equal to 8, that's that. They want x squared, so we square the side, we square the side. Are you, are you following? Now pay attention, don't write. Don't write. But pay attention, follow. Otherwise, you're going you're gonna to miss the show. So now we're squaring two terms. So what must I do? Square the first term, x squared. Square, that's the first term. Square the second term, plus 1 over x squared. Is equal to 8 squared is 64. Now what must I do? To get my middle term, mustn't I multiply the two terms in the bracket and times it by 2? Caleb, mustn't I multiply the 2 in the bracket and times it by 2? So let's do it. Let's do it. x times 1 is x. 1 times x is x times, and now I need to multiply it by 2 times 2. So what's x over x? 1 times 2. And 1 times 2 is how much? So that's why plus 2. Because x over x is 1 times 2 is 2. So now they only want x squared plus 1 over x squared. Here's your final answer coming up. Therefore, x squared plus 1 over x squared is equal to 64 plus 2 will come on the other side as minus 2. And here's your final answer. Bada bing, bada boom. 64 minus 2 is how much? Halas came over. And there we go. We are done. We are done. We are done. We are, today, Mets is Metsing. We are on fire here, guys. South Africa, welcome, welcome, welcome. We got learners from Limpopo, Upumalanga, Northern Cape, Western Cape, Eastern Cape, KZN, Northwest. Who's it? And from Koti Stan. From Koto, <laughs> Stan. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Katlejo, are you following? Easy, precious. Easy, peasy. Lemon squeezy. So learn this one. Right. For those of you who are sharp, who wrote fast, the next one. Is all, it's a higher order question. Check this one out. After this, we're going to do completing the square. We're going to solve for x by completing the square. That's going to come after this one. So, lots to come here, guys. It's as if, guess what, guys? It's as if we are writing our final exam today. And I'm just working through how it's done with you. Right. So, watch this one. Check this one out. If x squared minus 5xy minus 6y squared is equal to 0, find the ratio or ratios of x over y for 4 marks. Have you seen that one? No? Welcome to Kway. That's a final exam question. Come guys, let's crack this one. Let's crack this one. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Onlineers. Give it a go, guys. Give it a go. You got it. Ivana Beauty. Well done, well done, well done. Guys, hit us up with your comments. Talk to us. Talk to us, Irene. Question. Yes, Sarana. You do check. That's what I said. Check your validity. Check your validity. Whichever one is valid, you keep. If it's not valid, you discard. Right, let's check. How many of you know how to do this one? Give, give us a thumbs up in the comments. Easy stuff. Right, let's do it. Let's do it. So all we, they want the ratios of x over y. So all you do in your exam, watch here, you break this up equal to zero. x squared, x and x. 
y and y to give me y squared. To get the 5, the factors of 6 to give me a 5 is 6 and 1 minus plus. So x minus 6y is equal to 0 or x plus y is equal to 0. They want x over y. So x is equal to, take that on the other side, 6y, divide by y, divide by y. Here's your first answer. x over y is equal to 6, as simple as that or x is equal to minus y, right? We take that on the other side. Divide by y, divide by y. Here's your second answer. x over y is equal to 1. And there we go, guys. Those are your ratios, x over y. It seems difficult, but very easy. Yes? Yeah, minus 1, sorry. Thank you, bro. There we go. The Owens are warm here. Let's face it, my bro. Well done, well done, well done, well done. As long as you're taking note, Mr. Coulter. Yeah, boy, yes. Let's check our onliners. Did you get that? <laughs> Otherwise, it's detention for you, Mr. Coulter. Sir, you valid. <laughs> They're checking my validity, whether I'm valid or invalid. It's so easy, Shazam. Shazam. Bam. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right. Mm, let's solve for x by completing the square. Now I'm going to show you a quiet way of completing the square. A very different way to the way you guys see it at school. Right. So watch here. Watch here, watch here, watch here, watch here. Now the question tells you solve for x by completing the square. I'm erasing this, guys. I hope you're taking it down. Guys, the worst thing you can do today is to take down the memo incorrectly. You will fail nicely. Right. Watch here. Question. Let's go. Let's say, what is your question? Let's make up one. Let's make up one. x squared minus 6x minus 10 equals to 0. That's your question. Here's your answer. Watch here. Watch here. Watch here. The first thing you do by completing the square, you say x squared minus 6x. You take the 10 over is equal to 10. Now, the minute it says by completing the square, it's worth 4 to 5 marks. You follow this religiously. Step by step. I'm giving you a template. You copy and paste. You just change the values. So check what we do. Now, normally in school, you'll say plus half times the coefficient of x all squared on both sides. Yes or no? Right, come and show you a shortcut. We get our answer in one step. You see your coefficient of x? Half means divided by 2. So divide your coefficient of x by 2, right? Divide it by 2 plus whatever you divided it, that x by, you square. So divide by 2 on the one side, plus that x value on the other side. So let's all say it together. Divide by 2 plus x squared. Say it with me. I can't hear you. Ah, oh, come on, louder. You guys can do better than that. So let's do it. Watch. Don't write. Don't write. Watch how we do it. Onlineers, are you saying it with us? Divide by 2 plus that x value squared. That's the rule. That's the rule for completing the square. So let's do it. x squared, x. Because we're completing the square. So we took out the square. So x squared, x. Minus, minus. 6 divided by 2 is how much? Is equal to 10 plus. Whatever you divided by 2, you square it. 3 squared is how much? And there we go. We completed the square. And now you just solve for x. Divide by 2 plus x squared. Divide by 2 plus x squared. So now let's solve for x, guys. Let's solve for x. Watch here. Don't write. x minus 3 all squared is equal to 10 plus 9 is how much? 
Now we find the square root. We find the square root. X minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 19. Yes or no? We take the 3 on the other side. X is equal to minus 3 comes on that side. Plus 3 plus minus the square root of 19. X, so X will equal to 3 plus root 19. Or X will equal to 3 minus root 19. There we go. We solve for X by completing the square. Divide by 2 plus X squared. Right, Arij? Good. Take it down. Take it down. Take it down. Take it down. Onliners, I hope you're following. Divide by 2 plus that X value in the bracket squared. Divide by 2 plus X squared. Let's check the comments coming in. Are you guys following? Are you following? Munir. Samsudin. Where, where are you from? Which school? Hit us up. Bongeka princess. Divide by 2 plus X squared. Spine road in the house. <laughs> Divide by 2 plus X squared. For those of you who are done with this, I want you to start with the next one. Exactly like this. Some of you are fast. X squared minus 10x minus 12 equals to 0. Do that one. Exactly the same. Keep the comments rolling, guys. Keep the comments rolling. Keep the show going. We're into math boot camp for two days. It is easy. Maths is easy. It's a walk in the park. Sometimes Jurassic Park. Yeah, but it's good. Alan Glenn in Gauteng. Rangani. Alan Glenn, Gauteng. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. How are you doing, Mr. Kota? Ah, well? we are on fire here, bro. Are By you... now, you should be done. Grade 11s, you should be... Ah, I like that. You are done, right? It took you under 30 seconds to do, right? Like a boss. Are you vibing, Mr. Kota? Yes, are you vibing? Yes, we... Bro, the stage is on fire today. Say, I smell a distinction. Yeah, it's destination distinction, bruh. Rory destination Stone. distinction. Did you all do that? Right, let's go. Now you can, you can write it out in your exam in divide by 2 plus x squared. There we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's dollar it like a boss. x minus 10 divided by 2 is what? 5 all squared is equal to 12 plus. 5 squared is how much? 25. I'm going to put a tick. Did you all get that right? Well done. Well done. How many of you got it right up till here? Let me see. Show of hands. Well done. Give yourselves a nice round of applause. Come on. Well done. Well done. Well done. Right. Now we're solving for X. Come, let's move. X minus 5 over squared. 12 plus 25, 37. Square root, square root. X minus 5 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 37. X is equal to 5 plus minus the square root of 37. Bada bing, bada boom. Did you guys get five marks here? Well done, well done, well done, well done. Right, okay, now I'm going to give you one with a coefficient. It's done slightly different. Watch. Now I'm going to give you a bit of a heavy one. Let's make this 3x squared. Ha, let's go. Now watch. Now watch. Onlineers, did you get the previous one right? Hit us up in the comments. Mohamed Arib, are you in? Mohamed Arib, well done. Mashallah, Hillcrest High School. My sister, Komotso, me. <laughs> my brother from another mother, my sister from another mister. Awes. Let's go. No, maths is easy. You must just know what you are doing. It mustn't look like Japanese. Let's go. The first thing we do here, guys, we get rid of the three. So watch what I do. 
x squared minus 10 over 3 x minus 12 over 3 is 4 is equal to 0 over 3 is 0. We divide it by 3. Because we need the coefficient of x squared to be 1. Now watch, pay attention. Now we complete the square. Now we say, wait, wait, wait. Let's take the 4 first on the other side. So watch here. Check this one out. So x squared minus 10 over 3x is equal to 4. So I'm putting a tick there. You all understand that. Yes or no? Right. Now we complete the square. Divide by 2 plus x squared. So this is x minus 10 over 3 divided by 2. Do it on your calculator. 10 over 3 divided by 2 is 5 over 3. All squared is equal to 4 plus 25 over 9. So x minus 5 over 3 squared is equal to 4 plus 25 over 9. Let's do it on our calculators. 25 over 9 plus 4, 61 over 9. So x minus 5 over 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 61 over the square root of 9 is 3. So x is equal to, we take this on the other side, they're both over 3. So your first answer is 5 plus root 61 all over 3. Or your second solution, x is equal to 5 minus the square root of 61 all over 3. Those are your two answers and you will get 5 to 6 marks for that. Okay, take this one down. Right. Take it down, take it down, take it down. We got, there are two times you complete the square. One where the question says by completing the square. And the other instance is when you're re rewriting something in the form a into x minus p all squared plus q. Your turning point formula for your parabola to find the minimum or maximum or your turning point. Remember, I'm going to show you how to do that now. We're also going to complete the square. So what did I say? There are two instances when you complete the square. Number one, when the question asks you to solve for x. Or number two, to write it in a turning point formula. Or to find minimum or maximum. I hope you guys took that one down. Completely football. Banger. Here's another banger. Another banger. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, watch here. Watch here, watch here, watch here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, now they tell you to rewrite. Watch this. Rewrite. X squared minus 5X minus 9. Rewrite y equals that in the form f of x equals a into x minus p all squared plus q. So basically, they want you, to, I'm showing you the two scenarios when we complete the square. So the first one was solving for x. What's the second one? The turning point formula. All right, watch here. We do the same thing, but there's a little bit of a tweak. We tweak it slightly because we only, in an equation, we were working on both sides of the equal to sign. Here, we're only working on one side. So watch what we do. Watch here. Question in the exam. Four marks for you there. Answer. So y equals x squared minus 5x minus 9. Now we need to complete the square. So f of x is equal to, because they want it in the form f of x. Watch what we do. Listen. In, when we are rewriting it in this form, we divide that x by 2, like we did before. We're completing the square, divide by 2. But we're working on the other side of the equal to sign. So now we say minus that x value all squared. In an equation, we said divide by 2 plus x squared. Yes or no? Now we're working only on one side. So it's divide by 2 minus that x value all squared. So come I show you. Don't write. Put your pens down. Caleb, put your pens down. Arij, are you following? Good. Check. Check this out. Check how quiet it works out. X minus 
5 over 2 all squared minus 9 minus that squared. 5 squared is 25 over 4. And there we go. In one step, we completed the square. Big guys, you enjoying it? There's it. Here's our answer, guys. Check here. We completed the square in one step. You get the full marks. X minus 5 over 2 all squared. Now, minus 9 minus 25 over 4. Boom. Minus 61 over 4. A into X minus P all squared plus Q. A is equal to 1. That's the one. P is equal to 5 over 2. And Q is equal to minus 61 over 4. And that is what we call our minimum or our maximum. Yes or no, guys? Yes. Let's go. Come on, I give you one to do on your own. You want to try one like this on your own? Right. So this is x squared minus 5x minus 9. Let's give you another one to do. Let, I want you to try this one out, to rewrite it in that form. x squared minus 7x minus 10. Go for it. Knock yourselves out. Let's see if you get full marks for this. Let's see if you, knock, if you can get full marks for this. Guys, you are rewriting your own study guide today and tomorrow. You first master our notes. Whatever we've done in these two days, you master it. You memorize it because we are teaching you technique. Master that technique, you can go onto the field and you can play in the World Cup. Right. Let's check our onlineers. Mohammed Desai. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mr. Aaron, sir. Chidi. Welcome, Chidi. Big shout out. If you guys want shout outs, just send in your comments. We'll shout out to your school. Comment. Right, let's check, let's check, let's check. What's the comment that came in there? Yes, you can go backward on this on the YouTube live stream, guys. <laughs> Where there is hardship, there is ease. Mashallah. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Remember, maths is easy. Maths is easy. Just know your stuff. We're doing it together. So, y equals divide by 2 minus x squared. So, that is x minus 7 over 2 squared minus 10 minus 49 over 4. So, y equals x minus 7 over 2 squared minus 10 minus 49 over 4. Minus 89 over 4. Minus 89 over 4. How many of you got that right? Let me see. Show of hands. How many of you got that one right? Give yourselves a nice round of applause. Well done. Well done. Now, let's pick up the pace. What happens if you, they give you a coefficient here in the front? Right? What was your first name again? Zakir. Right, Zakir. Let's do this one. Let's tala. Well done, onlineers. What if we made this, Zakir? What if I told you y is equal to 3x squared minus 6x minus 10? Rewrite it in the form y equals a into x minus p all squared plus q. Let's do it together. I'm going to show you another very nice way to do it. Watch here. Watch here. Watch here. That's your question. Here's your answer. We want the coefficient of x squared to be 1. So, Zakir, what must I do? I must divide by? I must divide everything by 3. Very good. So, watch what happens here. We're dividing everything by 3, guys. Y over 3 is equal to x squared minus 6 over 3 is 2x minus 10 over 3. I'm going to put a tick here, guys. 
South Peninsula, SPs. Do you understand what I did there? We divided everything by three. Now we complete the square. Watch here, watch here, watch here. Y over 3 is equal to divide by 2 plus, no, no, minus x squared. Divide by 2 minus x squared. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Check it out. X minus 2 divided by 2 is how much? A ridge? 1, all squared. Minus 10 over 3 minus 1 squared is 1. So let's do that part. Y over 3 is equal to X minus 1 all squared minus 10 over 3 minus 1 is minus 13 over 3. Right, Arij? But in my final answer, I only want Y. So I divided by 3, so I multiply by 3. I multiply by 3. I multiply by 3 to get my final answer. Here comes my final answer. I only want y. y equals 3 into x minus 1 all squared minus 3. And the 3 will cancel out. I'm left with 13. And there we go. Here's your answer. a into x minus p all squared plus q. So all we did now in the beginning, we just divided by 3 in the start and we multiplied by 3 at the end. Grade 11s, are we good? We sharp. Quiet. Lovely. Lovely. Right. It's 10.30 now. We're already sitting in here for one and a half hours. We're supposed to have went for break by now. But we started about 20 minutes late because of all the formalities for this morning. So just a quick question. Has her name? Talk to me. Do we keep rolling? Let's check from our learners. Are your, are your stomachs screaming for food? Or can we go on for another 10 to 15 minutes? Kanala, man. Kanala, man. Talk to me. Come on, let me see your vibe. Hassanain, talk to me. Let's hear our onliners. Onliners, what do you guys say? Break or we move on? For another 15 minutes. Another 10 minutes. 10 minutes, guys. Uh, shout out. Okay, Mr. Kota, let's go for it. Another 10 minutes. Very Can we swiftly. go? Uh, Guguletu say, let's keep rolling. Guguletu from Guguletu. Hi, boy, hi, boy. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Right, 10 minutes and we break. Yeah, viva Guguletu. Awes. Amandla. Amandla. Google it too. Right, here goes. Right. Okay, so we're done with completing the square. Right, come. Okay, let's end off on a high note, right? Let's end off on a high note. Come, we do quadratic inequalities and I show you a shortcut. Inequalities and I show you a hack. I show you a shortcut for inequalities. So check here. Right. Solve for X. Solve for X. They tell us um, x squared minus 2x minus 8 less than or equal to 0. Right. Question, answer. Pay attention. Pay attention. Put down your pens. Any number less than 0 is negative. Yes or no? Any number less than or less than or equal to 0 is negative. Yes or no? So here's the rule. Neg. Bet. Bet means between. X will lie between two points. Hear me out? Hear me out? You'll check it. You'll see it unpack when I do it. So just remember neg bet. And remember pos is for positive, greater than or greater than or equal to zero. We'll use the word or. So just remember pos or neg bet. Say it after me. Pos or neg bet. Say it again. Say it again. Right, now check here. This is negative, right? So we're going to do the negative one first. X will lie between. Check how easy is it. Guys, a problem like this can be done in under six seconds. Wallahi. <laughs> so wallahi, kasam alakan my morph do it slav. I learned that in Cape Town. You guys, tin kuranok me kopka. Okay, anyway, let me go. Let me shut up. Let's go. Let's factorize that. 
We got x and x, that's a normal quadratic, 4 and 2 minus plus. What are my two critical values? Plus 4, negative 2. Yes or no? Yes or no? Right. Step number one. Draw a rough parabola. Lower number first. Higher number second, because it's a number line. Less than zero. Is it positive or negative? I can't hear you. And what's the rule? So where must X lie? Between the two points. So all you do, you copy and paste. So you double click and drag. You double click and drag. You double click and drag. So you bring it down and you use the same sign. Came over. Six marks, Baba. Take that one down. Yes. Okay. From the back. Guys, are you following what we did? We're going to do it again. I'll do more examples for you. Pause or neck bet. Pause or neck bet. We're doing the negative. Less than zero is between. Less than zero is between. So we factorize. So what, is our, what are our steps? Let's write it. We factorize. We put our critical values. We draw a rough parabola. And then we use pos or neg bet. In this case, we use neg bet. Negative. Negative. X lies between the two points. Right? X lies. There we go. Let's erase that. We drew the parabola. X lies between. Copy and paste. X, 4, minus 2. X lies between the two points. We use the same sign. Less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. All right. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to give you one to do like this. With negative. Don't worry about positive. I'll show you the positive one just now. Are we all okay? Good. Neg bet. Pause or neg bet. Let's check. Right. Let's see who's varam. Let's see who's varam. X squared minus X minus 12 less than zero. Do that one on your own. Do it exactly like this. Only thing here, you won't say equal to, you'll just say less than, less than. But here we go. Follow the process, guys. And I want to see how many of you get it right. I'd like to see how many of you get it right. Onliners, how are we doing? Keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm going to do the negative, and then we're going to do a positive, and then we go for break. That's it. We'll come back. I'll do one simultaneous equation before we go on to the parabola. We also got some exponents. We're running about 20 minutes late. So guys, just bear with us because of this morning's formalities, but we'll be all right. Don't worry. I still want to do some simplification, some exponential equations also for you. Are you guys done? By now, you should be done. Let's check in our answer. On-siteers, learners at the back, are we okay? You understand? Thanks. Give us a thumbs up if, you, if we are right. Can we move? Can we, can we do the memo for this? Let's do it. Let's break this up less than zero. X, X. Factors of 12 to give me a 1. 4 and 3. Minus, plus. The two critical values, plus 4, minus 3. Did you all get this right? Give me a thumbs up, guys. Give me a thumbs up. up until here, did you all get it right? Well done. Right, what do I do now? Rough parabola. Lower number first, higher number second. Less than 0 is negative. What's the rule for negative? Bet, between. X must lie between the two points. X, 4, minus 3. I use the same sign. Less than, less than. Six marks in the bag. How many, show of hands. How many of you did it this way? How many of you got it right? Show of hands. Well done. Give yourselves a nice round of applause. Right. So, Caleb, we now on to the next one. Watch. Watch. Everything all okay? Watch. Okay. 
So even if, guys, don't, don't panic. So when you see something like this, watch here, watch here, watch here, watch here. Let's take that out. Let's say I told you, let's make up one, what, x into x minus 2 less than or equal to 15. Right, here goes. Let's do this one together. Watch here. And you're going to love it because you know you're going to see this in the exam. Watch here what we're going to do. X times X, X squared. Minus 2X, minus 15, less than or equal to 0. Let's break that up. Less than or equal to 0. X, X, 5, 3, minus, plus, plus 5, minus 3. Do that, do that. Minus 3, 5, less than 0, between. X, X, 5, minus 3, less than or equal to, less than or equal to. Final answer, game over. Yes or no? There we go. Problem solved. Grade 11's Cape Town. You guys enjoying the show? Are we working quiet? Are we working liquor? That's most liquor -y. We don't talk like that. Eh? We speak the <laughs> Queen's English, Mr. Coach, please. That's most liquor. I can sort you out now that I'm with you in person. In, in person. Kata. We don't speak like that. What if this is positive, guys? What if this is positive? Let's, this is where we're going to end up before break. Don't worry. Relax. Calm your farm. What if I told you x squared minus 3x minus 10 greater than or equal to 0? Guys, we're not using the table method. I know some schools, you guys are using the table method. They make a table of signs. It will help you, yes, to fail. Don't do it. <laughs> Just do the shortcut. This heck. You will use it till the end of grade 12. Some things help you in life to fail. <laughs> right, let's do it together. Right, put your pens down. So we follow the same procedure. Watch here, greater than. So x, x, 5, 2, minus, plus. Guys, you can't tell me I'm working too fast. You all know how to factorize here, right? So what are my two critics? x plus 5 equal to 0. x minus 5, x is equal to plus 5, minus 2. We do that, we do that. That's minus 2. That's five. Yes or no? Now comes our final answer. Greater than zero. Is it positive or negative? And what was the rule for positive? Or. Remember we said pause or neg bet. So now we put the word or. To the right of or, x greater than or greater than or equal to. And to the left, x less than. Now the arrows point in the opposite direction. Caleb? For all, for positive, the arrows, the one arrow will point to the left, the other one points to the right. Now all you do, it will always look like this. So you might ask, for positive, will it always look like this? Always. So now, take the bigger number, Caleb, put it there. Take the smaller number, put it there, and game over. You got yourself six marks. Why? Because any number to the right of 5 is above is positive, and any number to the left is positive. Isn't that, isn't that true? Here we go. So you think you can do one now on your own? Obviously, it's copy and paste. You guys are soup. This is not rocket science, dude. Right. Let's give you one to do before break. We're about to cut for break. We're about to cut for our 30-minute break. Let's give you a cracker one to do. Let's give you Mr. Snotcop to do. 8x squared minus 2x minus 15. Greater than zero. There we go for six marks. We want our two critical values here. So factorize. We did it. You can use Mr. Snotcop. You can use Mr. Snotcop here. Hey, 
Here we go. Let's check our onliners. Kaylee Bauer, welcome, welcome, welcome. N4, N4. I need a break. I got ADHD. <laughs> Didn't take your tablets this morning. Where's your Ritalin? You threw it down the, you flushed it down the toilet because you're doing math, me, bro. Jimmy Jones. Jimmy Jones, you got stories, bruh. <laughs> Jimmy Jones, you got stories. Hope you guys loving the show, guys. Hope you guys loving the show. Ha! Huh. And when people are sitting back like that, with that kind of confidence, I know they are done. He dallied it like a boss. He said, come, Mr. K, let me face you. Right. By now, you should have factorized this one already. We did it. So this was, it was 2x and 3, 4x and 5. 2x and 3, 4x and 5. That was plus, that was minus, that was plus. So what was our two uh, critical values? X was equal to 3 over 2, or X was equal to minus 5 over 4. So we go there, we do that. My lower number there, my higher number there, greater than 0, or X greater than, or X less than, bigger number here, smaller number there. Got it right? Did you guys get it right, guys? Well done, well done, well done. Guys, it's quarter to 11. It's 10.45. Now it's time for our comfort break, bathroom break, breakfast break. Some of you, are your stomachs are screaming, right? We resume at quarter past 11. Guys, just an announcement on the side. Onliners, I'll see you guys back. We resume at 11.15 a.m. Uh, let us just wait for an announcement from Mr. Baker. Uh, give Mr. Baker some um, volume on the mic here. There we go. Guys, camera uh, only. Camera was here. Come and bring them here. Thank you, Mr. Baker. There we go, there we go, there we go. Thanks. <laughs> so there we go. That was the first half of the OCAP SA Grade 11 Maths Workshop coming to you live from the South Peninsula High School here in Cape Town. The session will be uh, taking up, uh, going up until 3 p.m. Uh, the session is hosted by uh, OCAP SA. Facebook and YouTube platform so you can revert back to the session. So now I'm going to be speaking to Mr. Adnan. Mr. Adnan is the mathematics teacher here at South Peninsula and we're going to be joined by a few of the learners here, the cohort of learners uh, here at South Peninsula. So I'm going to pass the mic to Mr. Adnan. He's been very uh, instrumental in putting this program together along with Mr. Baker. And of course, he is a runner uh, and he's been quite involved in our running club for Iteco Sport. Asalaamu Alaikum, Mr. Adnan. That's your mic. There you go. Tell me, how's the vibes been? You know, I've really been enjoying myself with Mr. Kota and with the learners today. There's some enthusiasm and high energy.
So you're taking the maths from academia, from Harvard, and you're bringing it to the grassroots and have... No, 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 no. I'm talking about grassroots in terms of a, a street cred. You know, Mr. Mr. Kota, his reputation is, uh, you know, at stake here. You know, he's here on the grassroots and his reputation, you know. So, yes. Sure, because Kota does have, I have to remind all of you that Mr. Kota has quite a following online and also to bear in mind that we have hosted this workshop during the course of May, August and October. So let's get to speak to some of the learners uh, that's part of the cohort here. Uh, please introduce me or give us uh, some context in terms of who we have with us today. Okay, so there we go. So guys, please to OCAF SA's YouTube platform and Facebook. We are coming to you live from the South Peninsula High School. The excitement and the energy is quite high today and we are speaking to a few of the learners that makes up some of the in-person cohort and I must say they've really been quite sharp and quite diligent uh, and been quite involved in some of the problems that Mr. Kota has been putting. So we're going to hand the mic over you can introduce yourself and let us know how has it been going with the workshop. What are some of your anxieties regarding um, the build-up to your maths final examination? Um, my name is Amy Sidney. I am in the Yeah, so tell us, you know, the final exam is around the corner. You know, some learners, they are suffering from night sweats, anxiety and so on. But I see that lots of the learners here at South Peninsula is quite confident because they've been working diligent, dil diligently over the years and during the course of the week. So how are you feeling uh, as a build-up to the final exams? Okay, and tell me a little bit more about Mr. Kota and his method of teaching anything that's uh, piquing your interest. Is it uh, interesting? Is it something different from what you used to? It is quite different. It's much, it's quite fast paced. Well, I know the circumstances, but it is quite fast paced. So I, I do need to pay full attention <laughs> to keep up with it. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, and we hope to pick up the conversation perhaps tomorrow and bring a friend with. We're going to have someone by the name of Rory Sang. Rory Sang took part in our workshop last year. He performed quite well and he's going to spend some time with us. So maybe we can pass your, the mic on to the gentleman sitting on here. Good morning. How are you doing? Tell us your name, what grade you are. Of course, you are in grade 11. There we go. Good uh, morning, sir. I'm, uh, my name is Ashik Poole. I'm a student of Spine Road High School. Um, it's an honor to be here, sir. Wow, wow. Spine Road High School. You know, we had Mr. Najar earlier on. 
and he's a legend, uh, legendary um, uh, educator and a person that's been uh, uh, overseeing Spino High School. So we're very pleased that you are over here. And tell me, how's it been going with the workshop? It's actually been very nice, sir. Uh, I really enjoy the sir's use of the local language and the humor, especially with uh, Snort Corp, sir. It was quite different from what we usually learn in the classroom, sir. Okay, yeah, I think Mr. Kota has got a, uh, a bag or a box of tricks, you know. Mr. Snotkop is one of these. You know, I've been doing this with Mr. Kota for a few years now, you know. So Mr. Snotkop and many other things come out of Pandora's box. <laughs> so do you find that the humor and Mr. Kota's unique way of teaching helps a little bit? Yes, it definitely does. It makes it more relatable. It makes it, yeah. Okay, so tell me... After this workshop, are we getting a distinction? Are we getting a, a positive, any strong marks or expectations? Inshallah. Okay. I mean, and yourself, we can pass the mic on to thank you so much for your time. Tell me your expectations for the final exam and how is this workshop going to contribute to some of your success? Hopefully, I get 100% in maths. Okay, there we go. Um, Inshallah. It should help with my time management in exams. I've always... I take a lot of time in my maths exam and I'll, I wish I had more time. Okay, so hopefully no, that'll help. No, fantastic. The learners at the school, including yourself, thank you so much for your time, taking time to speak to us. Your feedback is what we need and we appreciate. And we really are proud of all of you and we are behind you all the way and all the best with the workshop. Thank you so much. There we go. That is some of the learners from... Uh, the South Peninsula High School. We had one learner from um, Spinode High School, the legendary Spinode um, School, uh, where Mr. Najjar uh, was the principal. So this is the OCAF SA Grade 11 workshop coming to you live from Cape Town. This is hosted by OCAF SA in association with the Department of Basic Education, iSkill, and the South Peninsula High School. Uh, we're just taking a, a brief break and we will be back shortly after 11.
I will in yeah. I will introduce you and then we get going. Okay. okay. What's happening here? Yeah? Welcome Listening. back. We will now presume with the second half of the program, our next break will be close to one o'clock. That will be the lunch break. But for now, we'll proceed with the second round and we hand over to Mr. Kota. I'm stalling here. Yeah? I'm stalling. What's happening? I'm not getting in. I don't know if my computer stalled. Okay, wait. Did you? Just charge it. Must I go out and re log in? Mm. Yeah, don't talk on the mic. Maybe we just kill the mic. Switch it off. Not the responsive. Okay, leave it stylus. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Let me talk so long. So we'll just wait for Mr. Kota to reboot his computer. I think his Mac has also gone on a, on a comfort break. So while Mr. Kota is doing that, um, so we will be hosting the Match 2 paper tomorrow. We hope to see you guys tomorrow for Match Paper 2. We will be having a special guest here and some other guests that will be joining us tomorrow. If you have missed anything or any point in the workshop, you can log on to OCAF's uh, uh, YouTube platform and our website, ocafsa.org.za. If you scan in this QR code, this QR code on this banner, this will take you to our website. So there is a landing page for the maths workshop. It has all of the past videos for the grade 11 on the YouTube, uh, on the YouTube page. So what you will do, you'll log on to the website. You'll get on to the uh, maths um, the maths workshop page, it has all of the videos. You can pass on the grade 10 and 12 videos to some of your siblings. And all of that information you'll find on our YouTube platform. Very useful for your revision. How are we doing there, Mr. Kota? Okay. So he's just booting up. So for our online, online participants, just give us a few minutes, Mr. Kota. He's just restarting his machine. Uh, just bear in mind, if you're having any issues, uh, you can't view anything properly. You can always view these um, online videos uh, on YouTube at a later stage. Very important. Let me take this opportunity now I, now it's some okay. information about uh, an important development in the project. Uh, OCAV hosts a competition every year to award the top achievers uh, in mathematics. So for the grade 11 learners in January 2024, we'll open up a competition. We would need your June examination results as well as your final examination results. This will be gathered into a pool and the top winners will earn hard cash. So anything like 2,000 and plus for the first prize winner, second, third, and there is a division or a category for the most improved Le, uh, mo most improved learner. 
So our competition last year, we had Rory Sung. He scored 100% in mathematics. Second prize winner was, scored 99%. She's studying medicine at WITS. Third prize was Matemba. He scored 99% as well. He's studying astrophysics. So these are some of the careers of the future. And I hope from this cohort, we will be producing engineers, doctors, actuaries, the list goes on. And the most improved learners scored 18% in June and 85% in the final examination, just for being part of this workshop. So in Jan 2024, we will be opening up this competition. And this competition and our intervention caters for grade 10. This is the grade 11 uh, workshop. And we focus a lot on assistance for grade 12 learners as well. All information you can find on okafsa.org.za and on our YouTube platform as all of the videos um, of our past sessions. So even for grade 11, we had sessions in May and we had sessions in August. Let's go and get Dakota a hand. Getting through. Yeah, okay. Let me just go here. Okay, there's something happening. There's something happening. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sorry for the delay, sorry for the delay, guys. We just got, the computer was stalling, so we just had to reboot the machine. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rorisa Michaela, and I am the winner of the 2022 OCAP SA Online Metric Math Workshop Competition. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a mouthful, but we will get into that later. I just wanted to make this short video to encourage and congratulate the metric class of 2023 for making it this far we have been in the schooling system for 12 years now and it all comes down to this um we are at the end of the year which means that finals are starting soon and the time between now and finals is very crucial in that you have to work hard and make sure that you are comfortable with what you've been doing this whole year and that you're confident walking into that examination room and I can say confidently that um, by attending these workshops, you are bringing yourself one step closer to reaching your dreams because they will do wonders to your marks. Only if you actively participate and ask questions. So please just make sure that you use them wisely because they can really help a great deal in your marks. And having great marks in metric comes with a lot of great rewards. And speaking of rewards, OCAF SA is hosting a competition for um, the participants of these workshops. Um, so you will have to send your final results and your June metric results to them next day in January. But like, you don't have to worry about that right now. Just be mindful of the fact that there is a competition that will be hosted by OCAF SA. Um, if you registered for these workshops, you will be sent an email um, after the final results are re re released. But just make sure that you enter the workshop when, when that happens. And finally, I just want to say good luck. Just um, grind. This is the final push. You're almost there. And I believe in you. You will make it.
Are you on? Yeah, bro. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think we are live, guys. We're going live. We are about to go live. Let's see if I... Just wait. Uh -uh. Nothing's up. Okay, wait. Give me a second. Let's set background. Let's go in there. Let's go there. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let's go back into restream. Here we go. Let me see what's happening next. Right? Are we good? We good, we good, we good, we good, we good. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry if we had a bit of a technical issue. But we're back, we're back, we're back online. And we are live. Let's go. Let's get your whiteboard back up there, Mr. Coulter. And there we go. I think we're coming up live. Let's hear from our learners. Here we go. Back in the show. Yeah, let's take the show away. Sorry for that delay, guys. We had a bit of a technical issue, but we are back online. Get your comments coming in. Can you guys, onlineers, can you guys hear us and see us clearly? <laughs> Here we go. And we're back, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed your break, your comfort break. We are back in class. I'm going to end up with a simultaneous equation. Solve for X and Y simultaneously. Let's see if we can all do this. 2Y plus X is equal to 1. X squared plus Y squared plus 3XY plus Y equals 0. Let's take it down. This one comes out from a past paper, guys. 2Y plus X is equal to 1. X squared plus Y squared plus 3xy plus y equals to 0 for 6 marks. Let's solve this simultaneous equation. Learners, if you can't see from the back, uh, my advice would, would be to just make a request here to your teacher or to Asanain and come to the front, put your desk right here in the front so you can see it nice and clear. Onlineers, how are we doing? Loud and clear. Here we go. Shazam. Shazam. Big shout out to you. Okay, so this one here is equation number one. This one is equation number two. You always start where the power is one. So in our answer, in our answer, we're going to go 2y plus x is equal to one. Equation number one. And I'm going to put where the coefficient is one. So x is equal to one minus 2y. I'm going to take the plus 2y. I'm going to take it on the other side as minus 2y. And now I'm going to say substitute 1 minus 2y for every x, for every x in equation number 2. So what you can do in the exam, for every x, you just circle it and circle it because that's what you're going to substitute, 1 minus 2y. Let's do it together, guys. Let's do it together. We got 1 minus 2y squared plus y squared plus 3y into 1 minus 2y, that's x, y, y, x, that's the same thing, plus y is equal to 0. There we go, I'm going to put a tick there. I'm going to put a tick. You all understand what we did? We took equation number 1, we put it in terms of x and y, x or y, and we put it into equation number 2, correct? Right, let's remove the brackets, guys. Let's remove the brackets. Those of you who are good, you can start working it even before I give you the memo. So let's go. We're squaring a binomial. We square the first time 1. Minus 2y times 2 is minus 4y plus 4y squared plus y squared plus 3y minus 6y squared plus y is equal to 0. All we did, we removed the brackets. Now we collect our like terms, guys. So 4y squared plus 1y squared is 5y squared. 5y squared minus 6y squared is minus 
minus 1y squared. Let's go. Minus 1y squared. Now we got negative 4y plus 3y is minus 1y. Minus 1y plus 1y, y is out. So that minus 4y plus 3y is minus y plus y is 0. The 4y squared, that one is done. Now we got plus 1. Don't forget, we got the plus 1 equal to 0. Now this, we can make it the difference of two squares. So we can divide by negative 1. So I'm going to have y squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Divide by minus 1 is 0. Difference of two squares, y minus 1, y plus 1 is equal to 0. So y is equal to 1 or y equals minus 1. There we go. I'm going to put a tick. I'm going to put a tick. Okay, we can't see there. Let me see if I can lift this screen slightly. There we go. There we go. We solve for y. We now need to solve for x, correct? So now what do we do? X. So we're going to say substitute 1 for every y. In equation number one, or we're going to say substitute minus one. Substitute minus one for every y in equation number one. And what did that look like? X is equal to two. X is equal to one minus two y. X is equal to one minus two into one. X is equal to one minus two. X is equal to negative 1. On this side, x is equal to 1 minus 2y. x is equal to 1 minus 2 into minus 1. x is equal to 1. Negative times negative is a positive. 2 times 1 is 2. x is equal to 3. Now remember, because it's squared, we must get 2. Because it's square, the highest power will tell you how many solutions you're going to have. So if you've got power 2, you must get 2 solutions for x and 2 solutions for y. And there we go, guys. I'm only doing one um, solution. I'm actually only doing one uh, simultaneous equation. Let's go on to nature of roots. So put the heading there. Nature of roots. Very important topic, guys. Nature of roots. Let's go back to our live, our onlines there. Are we all good? I hope you all got that one correct. Onliners. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We are now starting with nature of roots. Now, many of you don't know the nature of roots and what does it mean? There are two types of questions that can be asked in nature of roots. One where you got to discuss or one where you got to prove. What did I say? And I'm going to erase it. I'm going to take that down, put the heading down, the nature of roots. Now, guys, if you haven't taken this one down, don't stress it's up, it's live on the OCAF website. You can re-watch this episode or this entire workshop again after the workshop, okay? So don't, don't panic if you didn't get something down. Right, let's put there the nature of roots. Now, there are only two types of questions they can ask you in nature of roots. One where you got to discuss the nature of roots and one where you got to prove or one where you have to show. Right. What does it mean, discuss? When we're discussing the nature of the roots, we'll either say whether roots are real or non-real. Whether roots are equal or unequal. Or whether roots are rational or irrational. Now, here are the rules. You need to know, we, remember nature of roots, we're dealing with delta, the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. Okay, how do we know whether roots are real or non-real? If it's real, please, you need to learn this. I'm going to write it here. You need to learn. These are the rules. For real roots, delta must be greater than or equal to zero. For non-real roots or imaginary roots, Delta must be less than zero. Agreed? Dakir, we good? For equal roots, delta must be equal to zero. For unequal roots, delta must be greater than zero. 
for rational roots. Delta must be a perfect square. And for irrational roots, not a perfect square. So take this down. So you can only get one or two of these type of questions in the exam. Let's see. Nature of roots. The one where they tell you to prove or to show. Let me, let's, let, let's go through that. The nature of roots. Where they tell you, this is, discuss the nature of the roots. I can just tell you x squared minus 4x minus uh, plus 4. Discuss the nature of that roots. Okay. Prove. So they can tell you in the exam, this is a higher order question. Show that the roots of 2x squared minus k is equal to minus 2, 2k minus 1. So let's go back. 2k minus 1 x has rational roots, has rational or real or unequal, whatever they tell you, has rational roots for all rational values of k. So this is how it can be asked in the exam. One way they ask you to discuss and one way they ask you to, sh to show or prove. We're going to do both. We're going to do one example of each so that you understand what to do in your exam. Are we all okay? We good? Right. Hope you've taken this down. So let's start with the first one. Let's check this. So here's your first one where we say discuss. So we're now going to say discuss the nature of the roots of, let's do this one, x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals to 0. There we go. And that one is only worth 3 marks. This one is worth 5 marks. Discuss the nature of the roots. And the other one is to prove that roots are either real or non-real, rational or irrational, or equal or unequal. That's the two scenarios you're going to see in your exam. You'll see the one I'm going to take. After we do this, I'm going to take out one out of a national provincial paper. And we're all going to do it together. And 100% we're all going to get it right. Okay, guys. This is round two. Fight. <laughs> Finish him. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, when they ask you to discuss, friends, what do we do? We go with delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. That's where we start. So b squared. So what you can do in your exam, that's a, that's b, that's c. So all we're going to do now, b squared minus 4 squared minus 4, a is 1, c is also 4. So delta is equal to negative 4 squared, 16, minus 16, delta is equal to 0. Now what do we know? According to that table of laws, if delta is greater than or equal, if delta is equal to 0, therefore remember, delta is greater than or equal to 0. So if delta is equal to 0, the roots are real, therefore they are real, they exist. It's equal to zero. Remember, delta is, e delta is greater than or equal to zero, so the roots are real. Delta is equal to zero, so therefore it has equal roots. Real, equal. And it's a perfect square because the square root of zero is zero, so it's rational. So they're either real or non-real, equal, unequal, rational or irrational. In this case, it's real, equal, and rational. Why? Because we got delta is equal to zero. Are you all with me? Grade 11s? Good. You're going to see. Please pay attention. Guys, stay online. Whatever, whatever you do today and tomorrow, you just listen and you hang on to every word I tell you. I promise you, you'll fly through your exams. Let's give you one more to do. Discuss the nature of... Come, let's give you this one. I want you to do this one on your own. 
2x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals to 0. Do this one exactly the way we've done this one. Question. Yeah, boy. Let's check. So it's 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. I'm just going to toggle between here. Let's check. You need more questions in simultaneous equations. Guys, we don't have enough time to do so many different questions. Learn the one style. Master the one style. I promise you, simultaneous equations can only be asked to you like that. You can now work through your past papers. The purpose of today and tomorrow is to make sure that you understand the topic, the concepts, and what to do. Obviously, you're going to go home and you're going to practice on past papers and you're going to practice on more questions that your teachers give, it, give you. But the purpose of today and tomorrow is to make sure that you understand every single topic. I'd love to sit with you guys for an entire week or three days or four days. And we do as much as we can. Don't worry, we got you grade 12s. Uh, grade 11s, you're going to be grade 12s in 2024. Inshallah, Hassanain will attest from next year. We will be kicking off these sessions. I'll be coming down beaming from this beautiful mother city in March, June, August, and final next year to make sure that you are on point. We're going to men mentor you, hold you by the hand, and take you right into finals grade 12. 2024. Inshallah, I mean, if I'm still alive. Say, I mean. Yeah. Comment. I can die after you get your 100%. Comment. <laughs> right, let's go. Like I told you, we here. Uh, we got you. Delta is equal to B squared minus 4AC. Delta is equal to, what's B squared? Minus 5 squared minus 4. A is 2. C is minus 6. Guys, you have to work fast. We don't have the whole day. Before you know it, today is over. We haven't even yet finished uh, algebra. So now we're on to 25. Negative times negative is a positive. 4 times 2 is 8 times 6 is 48. So delta is equal to 6073. Now what do we see? Delta is greater than or equal to 0. 73 is greater than or equal to 0. So therefore the roots are real. It's not equal to 0. Delta is greater than 0. So it's got unequal roots. Is it a perfect square? Is 73 a perfect square? No. So therefore, it's got irrational roots. Did you all get that one right? Well done. Well done. Right. One of the questions that came out in the past paper with regard for which values will the roots be equal. Let's take that one that I gave you earlier. Show that the roots of 2x squared. So now we're going on to that one. Onliners, we're going on to that one. Take that one down. Show that the roots of. So now we're doing part B. Remember from our mind map, we had part A, part B. We are now doing part B. Show that or prove that the roots. Prove that the roots of, let's see, 2x squared minus k is equal to minus into 2k minus 1 x are rational for all rational values of k. Are rational for all rational values of k. Are rational for all rational values of k. That's five marks. Okay, okay. Right, take the question down. Take the question down. Let's go into our answers, guys. That's the question in your exam. That's the question in your exam. Let's do it together. Now we got 2x squared minus k is equal to minus 2k minus 1x. Now, is this in standard form? No. We need to put it into the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Yes or no? So now we got 2x squared. Let's take this on the other side. Plus 2k minus 1x minus k is equal to 0. So watch here. Your coefficient of x squared is a. Your coefficient of x is b. And then whatever comes afterwards is c. Are you all with me? Can I put a tick there, grade 11s? 
Do you want to continue from here or do you want me to do it for you? Must I do it for you? No problem. Let's do it. So now we're going to go delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. So b squared is 2k minus 1 squared minus 4. a is 2. c is negative k. So that would give me, let's uh, remove the brackets here, guys. That would give me 4k squared minus 2k times 2 is minus 4k plus 1. Minus 4 times 2 is 8 into minus k. This is equal to, please make sure your algebra is on point. Make sure you remove the brackets correctly. Negative times negative is a positive. 8 times k is 8k. What am I left with? 4k squared minus um, 4k plus 8k is plus 4k plus 1. Right. Now we are stuck. Right? In inverted commas. Because that's what we get. Look what the question asks you. Show that the roots are rational. What do we know about rational roots? Delta must be what? Ah, uh ah. -uh. Uh, yes, delta must be a perfect square for rational. Greater than or equal to zero is real. They asking you for what? Are they asking you for real or are they asking you for rational? Ah, so now, watch here, watch here. Delta, so we know, for rational roots, this is what you'll write on the side, for rational roots. Delta must be a perfect square. Therefore, delta equals, is this a perfect square? Yes, it is. Isn't this 2k plus 1 squared? Isn't this equal to that? Isn't a square a perfect square? Yes or no? 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 is 2k plus 1 squared. 2k plus 1 squared is a perfect square because that will give me 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Plus one, sorry. There we go. Therefore, delta is a perfect square. Therefore, delta is a perfect square. Therefore, the roots will always be rational. Now you're going to ask me, do I need to write this long story on the side? Yes, you do. Because you've got to prove it. You've got to prove that delta was a perfect square. Now that you prove that delta was a perfect square, now you, have, now you state, therefore the roots will always be rational for all rational values of k. Okay. Do you want to do one more like this? We do one more like this, and then that wraps up the nature of roots. That's all you need to know. How to discuss and how to prove. The topic is done. In fact, you know what I'll do, guys? I'll give you two more. I'll give you, I'll give you one more from my notes, and I'll give you one from last year, uh, from 2017, final grade 11 paper. So we'll do two. If you know that, you know the nature of roots. Guaranteed you're going to get full marks in your exam. Guys, you master what we do in this two days. Tomorrow is paper two. We still got trigs, general solution, identities, reduction. Hey, the Popa Khan dance. Right, here goes. I hope you took, all took this down, guys. I hope you all took it down. In fact, let me give you another one. Those of you who are still writing this one down, you can take the next one down and start. Let's go for it. Check this one out. Prove that the roots of 3x squared plus p equals 4x plus px squared are real for all real values of p. 
It's five marks. Let's go, onliners, onsiteers, bums on seat, eyeballs on screen. Ladi popper dance. Mr. Kauta, did you get that? No, I didn't get that one. I just someone, heard somebody from the back someone, saying, Osh. Someone dropped a nasty bomb here in the wall. Oh, never heard that. There's so much excitement over here, you know. We're <laughs> vibing in different ways. They're farting now. flames here, bro. <laughs> 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 oh, oh the party us. flames here. <laughs> Mansi showing them flames. Call the fire department now. It's on fire. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, don't put those comments comments up. <laughs> the guys are rough here. Rough, rough, and on Boskov. PG Please 18. screen. PG. PG-18. PG-18. Yeah. Right. In our answer, watch here. 3x squared plus p equals 4x plus px squared. We need to get it into standard form. So 3x squared minus px squared. We're going to put the x squareds together. Minus 4x plus p is equal to zero. Now watch what I do here. We take out x squared as the highest common factor because we got two terms. That's 3 minus p squared minus 4x plus p equals to 0. Did you all get that? Did you at least do that? No. You see, you needed to get your x squareds together and then make 1x squared from 2x squared so you, could, you had to group it. Take out the highest common factor. Now you go delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. So b squared minus 4 squared minus 4. A, A, what's A? 3 minus P. What's C? P. That is equal to 16. Minus 4 P. I'm taking this P to the front. Into 3 minus P. That is equal to 16. Negative 4 P times 3 is minus 12 P. And then I've got negative times negative is a positive. 4 times 1 is 4 P times P is P squared. Right? 16 minus 12P plus 4P squared. Let's just check this one again. I'm just double checking. So we got 3X squared minus PX squared minus 4X plus P. That's correct. We pull out x squared, we got 3 minus p, minus 4 plus p is equal to 0. That's correct. b squared, minus 4 squared, minus 4. a is 3 minus p, c is p. Minus 4p into 3 minus p. Minus 4p times 3 minus 12p. Negative times negative is a positive. 4 times 1 is 4. p times p is p squared. So you left with delta is equal to 4p squared minus 12p plus 16. So delta is equal to 4 into, if I took out the highest common factor, I got p squared, p squared minus 3p plus 4. Yes or no? Right. For roots to be real, for roots to be real, delta is always here. Delta will be greater than 0. Therefore, Delta is greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, your roots will always be real. And there we go. I'm going to give you one more. Comment. I'm going to give you one more. Give me a second. The one that came out of the past paper, guys. If x is equal to minus 5 plus minus the square root of 12, 12, no, let's go back. 
3 minus 12k squared all over 4. For which values of k will the roots be equal? For which values of k, for which value of values of k will the roots be equal? For which value of values of k, or let's put it this way, roots be real. There we go. Let's check the comments. Take that one down. You guys can start with that last one. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you heard the bomb through the live video. <laughs> oh my word. These ones are on another level here, Sanin. Hey, 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 hey. So much excitement. Right, let's do this one, and this one then brings us to the end of this. You know what I'm going to do? After this, we're going to go into functions. I want to tap out of algebra. We'll come back to algebra with exponential equations a bit later on. I, I need to move into functions, but I will do rationalizing the denominator, and I will do simplification of exponents and exponential equations. We will cover it. But I just want to move after this question, I want to move directly into functions. Right. So here we go. That's the question in our answer. For it to be real, we need the square root of a positive value. We cannot have a square root of a negative under the third sign. Yes or no? Square root of a negative number doesn't exist. You can't get a square root of a negative number. So for it to be real... Whatever is underneath the third sign must be what? Right, so whatever is under... So now you're going to say, for real roots, this is what you do. For real roots, for real roots, 3 minus 12k squared must be greater than or equal to 0. Don't say greater than 0. Greater than means unequal. Remember our rule. For real roots... Greater than or equal to. If you left the equal to sign, you'll get it wrong. Right. What is this, guys? What is that? Isn't that an inequality? So minus 12k squared, minus 12k squared plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Divide by negative. Let's divide by a negative first. So we're going to have 12k squared minus 3, less than or equal to 0. Why? Because we're dividing by a negative, our inequality swaps over. So a negative will become uh, greater than or equal to, will become less than or equal to. Now let's divide by 3. Let's now divide by 3. So what am I left with? 4k squared minus 3 divided by 3 is 1, less than or equal to 0. And what is that, guys? Difference of two squares, yes or no? 2k minus 1, 2k plus 1. So k is equal to a half or k is equal to minus half. These are our two critical values. So they're testing you nature of roots and inequalities in the same problem. Right. So now what we do? We go there. We do that. Remember what I taught you earlier? Minus a half plus half. Less than zero. Positive or negative, guys? Negative. And what's the rule for negative? Ah, between. You've been paying attention. So K must be between the two points. Now here's your final answer coming up. K half minus a half. K is between the two points. I told you use the same sign. Less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. And there's your values of K for which the roots will be real. There we go. There we go. There we go. We are done. Okay. Now, um, there are two types of exponential equations that I want to do with you before we do um, functions. Let me show you the two styles 
In fact, three styles that you're going to see. There are three types of exponential equations that you will possibly see in your exam. So, and I'm going to show you how to do each style. And I'm only going to do one example of each. You master the three styles, you go home, you start practicing from past papers, doing more examples of it. I promise you, you'll get them right all the time. There are three sides. Remember, what are we doing today, guys? I'm giving you templates. You're rewriting your own study guide. So when you know, or if you are doubtful and you want to ask yourself, how do I do a certain question or a certain style of question in a topic? You're going to refer to our weekend's notes. Today and tomorrow's notes, you refer to it. You say, oh, okay, that's the way we do it. Right. Does the question that I have fit into that? And then you just work it out or unpack it the way it needs to be unpacked. Okay, so here goes exponential equations. There are three types. E wait. <laughs> exponential equations. Right, there are three. What did I say? How many types are there? One, two, three types. Take this down, guys. Take this down. The, you rewriting your study guide for this upcoming exam. The first one is where you have one term equal to one term. Right. Let me show you, give you an example of that. If I told you 9 to the power x is equal to 27, there's it. One term equal to one term you're solving for x. That's style number one. Style number two, where you got multiple terms equal to one term. They separated by a plus or a minus. So you want to see an example of that? 2 to the power x plus 2 plus 2 to the power x minus 2 plus 2 to the power x is equal to 42. All right. There's another one. All right. This is style number B. Style number C. Style number C is where you have 2 to the 2x plus 1 plus 2 to the power x is equal to a number. So you got x in the middle and you got 2x there. So that's the third type. This is what we call by suitable substitution. We call this method the K method. Not after my name. It's just called the K method. So you got three types of problems to do, guys. Okay. Right. How do we do the first type? How do we do the first type? We got to make the left hand side and right hand side bases the same. Right? You got to make the left hand side and right hand side bases the same using your prime bases, threes, fives, or sevens. Then you got to cancel the base. Then you cancel bases, then you solve for x in the power. This, you break up. You take out your highest common factor. You cancel what you took out. And then you solve for x. So they done differently. One, two, three. A is done in these three steps. B is done in these four steps. C is done using the K method. They all look very similar. They look very similar, but they're very different. They approached in different ways in your exam. Agreed? Let's do... Let's do a couple of examples of each. Let's do one example or two examples, one example, one example. And then we're done. Then this topic is done. Then we can move into functions. How are we doing, onlineers? We're getting 100% for our exams. Inshallah. I mean, 100 or nothing, Baba. 100 or nothing. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, so. Oh, 
Okay, watch this one. Check this one out, guys. Solve for x, right? I'm doing A. Solve for x. Now, I'm not going to give you an easy one. An easy one is 2 to the power x is equal to 8. Come on. That is baby work. 2 to the x will equal to 2 to the 3. 2 and 2 will cancel. x is equal to 3. Don't write this one. Don't write it. That's smarties, M&Ms. Check this one out. 5 to the power x into x. Five to the plus three, five to the minus three, let it go on plus three. X plus four is equal to one over five to one over one twenty five. Eight over a thousand. Right, for four marks, solve for X. I wish I had a lot of time, guys. I wish I had a lot of time. You want to make the basis the same. You want to make the basis the same. You want to cancel the basis and you want to solve for X in the power. That's what, where you want to be with this question. It's a higher order grade 11 final exam question. I promise you, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to love it. When we're done with it, you'll say, oh my word, was it so easy? Is that all I needed to do? Onlineers, are we matching? Are we matching? Oakland's high in the house. <laughs> I know a couple of the schools here. This, uh, Cape Town's got some top schools here. Rustenburg High. Weinberg High. Sen Sushi. Susie. Sen? Susie. Sen Susie. Susi. Yeah. Uh, isn't it Sen Sushi? Not Sushi. Not Sushi. sushi. Sen -susi. Wabi Sabi. Ha. Sen Susi. <laughs> Sen Susi. <laughs> South Peninsula. South Some Peninsula is stopped. Of they course. Spine Road. Spine Road. Glendale, Mondale, Cedar. Islamia. Durbanville. These are all the schools we did workshops for over the past 20 years, guys. Oakland's. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Never get tired of saying, love Cape Town. I think I should move to Cape Town, right? 5 to the power x squared plus 4x is equal to, 8 goes into 8 once, 8 goes into 1,125 times. Now there's a relationship between 5 and 125. So 5 to the power x squared plus 4x is equal to 1 over 125 is 5 to the power 3. Yes or no? Now we bring that up to the top. 5 to the power x squared plus 4x is equal to 5 to the power minus 3. When you bring a, top, uh, 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 a term to the top, the sign changes. Now that and that cancels out. So x squared plus 4x is equal to negative 3. That's a normal quadratic equation. x squared plus 4x plus 3 is equal to zero. We then break that up equal to zero. X, X, three, one, plus, plus, X is equal to minus three, or X is equal to minus one. And there you go. You can get four to five marks for that problem. Quine? Yes or no? We good? Right. Now we go on to type B. I gave you a type A scenario. I'm now going to give you a type B scenario and a type C scenario. Okay, let's see. Onlineers, 
Inyati High School. Minus one or minus three, well done, Google A2. <laughs> My name Jeff, I love you, Mr. Kota. I love you too, brah. Moving, ooh, eh, eh, uh -huh. I ran no. away. No, no, no. no. It's a PG-18 show. PG-18 show. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Check this one out, guys. Check this one out. That same one that I gave you, solve for x. 2 to the power x plus 2 plus 2 to the power x minus 2 plus 2 to the power x is equal to 42. For 6 marks, solve for x. Learn, I beg you guys, every problem I do today, learn. You know why? These are all examinable. Obviously, you're not going to see all of them. They're only going to ask you one out of the three styles. You have to know all. Don't spot. You know what does spot mean? Okay, I'll just choose this. Don't pick and choose. Okay, I'll only learn style one. You know your luck, grade 11s. You know what they say? You're waiting for the right ship to sail in, but with your luck, you'll be waiting at the bloody airport. Okay, that's a higher order joke. <laughs> higher grade. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, we break it all up. So 2 to the power x times 2 to the 2. Remember, when we break it up, 2 to the x times 2 to the 2, because when we multiply and basis are the same, we add the powers, plus 2 to the x times 2 to the minus 2, plus 2 to the x is equal to 42. So there we go. We, break, we broke them up. We divorced them. We talaked them. We separated them. And now we got three terms equal to 42. Now what did I say? What was our next step? Take out the highest common factor, am I right? So what's your HCF? 2 to the power x. So that's out. That's out. That's out. That's out. So what am I left with in brackets? Highest common factor. What am I left with? 2 squared plus 2 to the minus 2 plus 2 to the x divided by 2 to the x is 1. HCF. Highest common factor. You can't take out 2. On its own, because you can't leave X hanging in the air on itself. X is attached to the two. Are you all with me? Right. Now we simplify what's in the bracket. So 2 to the power X into, that will become 2 squared. You can do this on a calculator if you want. Your answer will be 21 over 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 plus a quarter is 5 and a quarter. 5 and a quarter is 21 over 4. Is equal to 42. Now we, want to, we only want 2 to the x on this side. So we multiply this side by 4 over 21. What I do to the left, I do to the right. That and that will cancel. That and that will cancel. 2 to the power x on its own, that's what I want, is equal to 42 times 4 divided by 21. Your answer is 8. 21 into 21 once. 21 into 42, 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. So therefore, 2 to the x is equal to 2 to the 3. 2 and 2 cancels. x is equal to 3. And there we go. That's your final answer. Learn. Now we're going to do the one with the K method. Right. So this was style number B. We did style A, one term equal to one term. We did style B, many terms equal to one term. Now I'm going to do the K method. I'm going to give you one where you have to use suitable substitution, which is what we call the K method. So let's see. Right, here goes. Uh, from your past paper, 4 to the power x minus 2 to the power x is equal to 2. For 4 marks, solve for x. Right. Like I said, I'd love you to do it on your own.
If you're good, you can try it. If you want to try it on your own, try it on your own. This is straight out of a past paper. I told you guys, today and tomorrow is as if we are writing our final exams. Only thing we're doing it in one study collective, as a name, where we've got 10,000 learners in one study group. Trust me, today and tomorrow you would have never sat at home doing from 9 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock or 5 o'clock, whatever time we finish today. You would have never stayed at home doing math. In our answer, break it up. The number 4 is 2 squared to the power x. Minus 2 to the power x. Minus 2 is equal to 0. You want to, the minute you see this, this situation, you want to make your right hand side 0. I'll tell you why. Now we're removing the bracket, so this is 2 to the power 2 times x is 2x, minus 2 to the power x, minus 2 equals 0. We're going to make it a quadratic equation, guys. Watch. So 2 to the 2x is 2 to the x times 2 to the x, minus 2 to the x, minus 2 equals 0. Can you see it's done very differently to the previous one? Pay attention. Whenever you see your middle term's power, half that of your first term's power, it becomes a quadratic. You break it up like this. Now you say, let 2 to the power x equal to k. Let 2 to the x equal to k. So you got k times k minus k minus 2 equals 0. So what is k times k? k squared minus k minus 2 is equal to zero. Perfect trinomial, guys. Let's break it up. K, K, 2, 1, minus, plus. K is equal to 2, or K is equal to minus 1. Now you're going to say, but K equals 2 to the X. So therefore, 2, instead of k, I'm going to put 2 to the x. 2 to the x is equal to 2. Or 2 to the x here is equal to minus 1. This one, can't, this one is not valid. It can't equal to a negative on that side. So 2 is 2 to the 1. 2 and 2 cancels. x is equal to 1. And that's your final solution. This is what we call, what do we call this? The K method. We call this suitable substitution. Now, let me explain to you something to expand your mind. Just listen. Why can't, why is this one not valid? Because 2 to the x, watch here, 2 to the power x, grade 11s, is a positive exponential graph. Yes or no? Isn't 2 to the x a positive exponential? This is the graph 2 to the x. Does anything happen here in the negative side? No. So not valid. I'm just explaining to you why. <laughs> Make you vase. We're going to be doing this when now that we're going into functions. Right, put the heading functions. Our favorite topic. Your Moses. Time to meet your Moses in functions. So far, so good, guys. Yo, it's 25 past 12 already, as a name. The take loop. Time is flying. Right, I'm going to start off with functions. But remember, we're going to carry on. 15 minutes so later. So we're going to break at quarter two. Right. We're going to break at quarter two. Right. Here we go, guys. Functions. What do you need to know in functions? Right. Let's put there. Functions. We need to know the straight line. Take this down. We need to know the parabola. We need to know the hyperbola and shift. And we need to know the exponential and shift. 
two types of parabolas. Two types of parabolas. Two types of hyperbolas. Two types of parabolas. Two types of hyperbolas. Two types of exponential and one straight line. By now, you ought to know the formulas by heart. You ought to have memorized the formula. Straight line you've been taught from grade 9. Y equals MX plus C or AX plus Q or AX plus B. Yes or no? Parabola. What are the two types? Y equals AX squared plus PX plus Q or Y equals the turning point formula. A into X minus P all squared plus Q. Yes or no? Hyperbola. Y equals A over X. And with a shift in asymptotes, Y equals A over X minus P plus Q. Exponential. Y equals A to the power X. Or y equals a to the power x minus p plus q. Now, many of you get confused between the word asymptote and axis of symmetry. Now, I'm going to tell you a way to remember it. What is the abbreviation of the word asymptote? Right. Now, you know in life, you can't go around touching someone's. So, you know the word asymptote means don't touch. It means a line which your graph never touches. A line which the graph never touches. So, the abbreviation of the word asymptote is A-S-S. And a line, and it's usually shown by dotted lines. These are asymptotes, lines which your graph never touches. Axis of symmetry is your line, your mirror image, your symmetry. Your line of mirror. What do we need to know for all these graphs? We need to know how to sketch. We need to know how to find equations. We need to know how to give the domain, how to give the range, how to give the asymptotes, if they are, how to give the axis of symmetry. What else? How to shift the graph up, down, left, or right, and how to give reflections of the graph. Reflection about the x-axis, reflection about the y-axis, reflection about the line y equal x, reflection about the line y equal minus x. So this is everything you need to know about functions. Now we're going to start with an exam model. And I'm going to start with, I'm going to show you a couple of shortcuts here, man. That will just make you boost your confidence for this. Right, guys? Let's see. Onliners, are we ready? Irene Zungu, we need you in KZN. Don't worry, we're coming to KZN, brah. We have been there. Irene, we have been there. We were in KZN. When were we, were we in KZN? About two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Next year, don't worry, Irene. We're going to see you in KZN also four times next year. Four times Joburg, four times Cape Town, four times KZN. Right. Now, come I show you guys a little trick. You guys want, you know, it's hack time. <laughs> trick time. If you got a straight line, just to show you something. Say you got a straight line. This is graph H. If I tell you that is 10, and this point is 5, and I want the equation of H for two marks, or I tell you that this graph is given y equals ax plus q. Find a and find q. Basically, what am I asking you? I'm asking you for the equation. Am I right? 
Come and show you a shortcut on how to determine the equation. All you do in your answer, it's only worth two marks. I show you a shortcut. Y equals MX plus C. What is C or your Q value? 10. That's your C or your Q value, your Y intercept. Yes or no? So MX plus C plus Q. What's your Q value, grade 11s? 10. What am I short of? The A value or the M value? To get your gradient, yes or no? Come and show you a shortcut. Change the sign of Y. Change the sign of Y over keep the sign of X. So check how easy is it. Check how easy is it. Plus 10 will become minus 10. Plus 5 remains, remains plus 5. What is minus 10 over 5? And there's your final answer. You got your answer in one line. You don't have to say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to find your gradient. You can use the shortcut if the two intercepts are given. Change the sign of y over keep the sign of x. That's it. And if you can simplify the fraction, you simplify it. If you can't, you leave it. Very important concept. Because when I do the parabola in a straight line and I combine the two graphs, we're going to be using this concept. So what if grade 11s, come, let's do another one. Let's do one going in that direction. And I call that graph G. And I tell you that that is negative 3, and I tell you this is 5. Find the equation of G. You want to do it on your own, or you want me to do it for you? All right, quickly. It should take you three seconds. Can I count three, and you should give me the answer? Let's go. One. Two. Three. Stop. You should give me the answer. This one you can, you can actually do it by looking at it. You don't even need to write. Check it. G of X is equal to change the sign of Y over keep the sign of X. So it will be 3 over 5X. Plus your Q, your Y intercept, minus 3. Your answer is 3 over 5X minus 3. I didn't even write it. We did it by inspection. G of X is equal to MX plus C minus 3. Change the sign of Y over keep the sign of X. Finish. That's your final answer. Some people in the exam are going to work hard and some people are going to work smart. You need to choose which one you're going to be. A hard worker or a smart worker? The smart workers are going to finish the three-hour paper in one and a half hours or in an hour. They're going to do the paper two to three times, different ways. When they finish, they're not going to say they think they got a hundred. They're going to walk out saying, I know I got a hundred. Right, let's go. Let's go. So I'm going to clear here. I'm clearing. Let's take an exam model down. Let's take an exam model down. Come on. Clear frame here. Come, Mr. Computer. Come on. Clear. There we go. Right. Guys, let's do this. Okay, you know what? Let's first start off. 100% you're going to see. We'll do the parabola and the straight line after, after lunch. What I want to do, we've got about 10 or 12 minutes left. Let's do the ones where you know you're going to be guaranteed full marks. You know the hyperbola with the shift in asymptotes, 100% you have to see in your exam. Am I right? Let's start with that one first. Right. So put the heading, hyperbola with a shift in asymptotes. Hyperbola with a shift in asymptotes. So now I'm going to tell you H of X is equal to 4 over X minus 1 plus 2. Right. Question number 1. I want the equations of the asymptotes. 
Now, here's an exam. This is what's going to be asked. Exam-style questions. The equations of the asymptotes. I want the intercepts with the axis. I want you to sketch the graph. And I want you to give me the equation of the axis of symmetry. For m less than zero. And I want the equation of p of x if p of x is h of x reflected about the x axis. There we go. There's your questions. Let's put a mark education so that you know what you're aiming for. Equations of asymptotes, two marks. Intercepts with the axis, four marks. Sketch the graph, three marks. Equation, three marks. P of x, three marks. Three, six, nine, 10, 11, 15 marks. Total marks, 15. You can't afford to throw away these marks. This is marks for jam. We're going to do both. We're going to do this scenario where you have to sketch. Then we're going to do the reverse of it. That if it's given, how to find its equation. Then you're done. That's hyperbola with the shift in asymptotes. Then you'll go for break. You'll come back from break. We'll do a parabola in a straight line. We'll do an exponential. Then we're done with functions. Then we got number patterns, quadratic. You guys did the quadratic number pattern. Arithmetic se sequence, linear pattern, geometric pattern, quadratic. Tn equals an squared plus bn plus c. Or am I talking Japanese? You did it, ne? Good. What you say? No rugby tonight. We do math. You game. Are you game for math? Come on. Let's see how dedicated are you guys. We do math right through the night. Pajama party. Pajama party, bruh. Ay, 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 ay. Mr. Kota, you. You're a math machine. We call it a math scrub. Ses panta diari pala. Fifteen panta yi. Five minutes, we're going to lunch. Then I'm gonna talk. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Matt is matching. Let's go. Let's answer this, guys. The equations of the asymptote. So let's let's answer. Now we know that this is given in the form y equals a over x minus p plus q. Yes or no? Good. So this is your x asymptote. So the answer to question number one, your p-value, so x is equal to one. You must write it out like this, x equal to one. You change the sign because the negative comes from your original value. This is your p-value. p is equal to one. So x is equal to one and your q-value is your y asymptote. What's your y? That's your q-value. q is equal to two. And there we go, you'll get your first two marks. Right, question number two. The intercepts with the axis. How do we get intercepts? Grade 11s, how do we get intercepts? Don't we use the dual intercept method? Don't we say, let x equal to zero, solve for y. Let y equal to zero, solve for x. Yes or no? So let's do it. So y equals four over x minus one plus two. Let x equal to zero. And you must write this out. You get marks for this, guys. It's four marks. They want to see the calculation. Let x equal to zero. So what's your answer? Y 
equals 4 over 0 minus 1 plus 2. Y equals, so when X is 0, what is Y? 4 over minus 1 minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2. So Y is minus 2. Now we're going to say let Y equal to 0. So 4 over X minus 1 plus 2 is equal to 0. Put your pens down. How do we solve for X? One times four is four minus two x plus two is equal to four minus two x is equal to. I'm just going to move this up. Minus two x is equal to four minus two is two. X is equal to two over minus two. X is equal to minus one. So when y is zero, x is minus one. So they want the coordinates of the intercepts with the axis. So the intercepts of your axis is going to be. That's your first one. And that's your second one. How did we get it? Let x equal to 0, solve for y. Let y equal to 0, solve for x. Take this down. Take this down. Learn this. You're going to see this in your exam. You will remember my words. When you're writing the exam and you see this, you're going to say, oh, I remember doing this on that Saturday. Learners at the back, are we all right? You're understanding? Excellent. Use this weekend as you're learning with me. Memorize it and study it. It's going to make your task for your exams so much easier. You are here. You might as well apply yourself. So when it comes time to exams, you don't need to study. You can just read through your notes. Study it with us. Right, let's sketch the graph. Let us sketch the graph. So obviously, first thing you have to do is insert your asymptotes. Right. The first thing we need to do is insert our asymptotes. So let's go. Let's draw our graph. There we go. There we go. What was our asymptote? X was equal to 1. So there's 1. X is equal to 1. We make a dotted line going through 1. Y is equal to 2. 1, 2. There we go. Y is equal to 2. Right. Um, what was our intercepts with our axis? What was it? Let X equal to 0. Y was equal to? Negative 2, 0 and minus 2. Here we go. Uh, that's 0 and negative 2. That's your one point. And what was your other point? Minus 1 and 0, am I right? The other point was minus 1 and 0. There we go. It's a positive exponential. A value is greater than 0. A is greater than 0. So it's in your first and your third quadrant. So that means your graph must be drawn. So let's join these two dots. That's quadrant one, two, three, four. So we join those dots. Making sure. Does it touch your asymptotes? Never. And there we go. Your, graphs, your graph is fully sketched. We're going to go for break just now. We've got two minutes to go before break. So... We've got the equation of asymptotes. We do, did the intercepts with the axis. We sketched the graph. Now we need to do the equation of the axis of symmetry with a negative gradient for m less than zero. Now remember, your axis of symmetry goes through this point here where your two asymptotes meet, one and two. So watch here. Watch how we do question number three. Guys... Put down your pens. Put down your pens. This is important. I'm doing question number four. I'm answering question number four. 
the axis of symmetry with m less than zero with a negative gradient. So y equals minus x plus c. If it was with a positive gradient, you would have just said y equals x plus c. It's a straight line. You want it with a negative gradient. So the equation of the axis of symmetry is y equal minus x plus c. Which point do I use? We need to solve for c. There's x, there's y. You have to use your p and your q value. So what is, what is y? 2 minus, what is x? 1 plus c. c equals 2 plus 1 is how much? 3. Take the 3, put it in there. Here's your final answer. Y equals minus x plus 3. That's your final answer. For your, for your axis of symmetry, you've got to insert the point of intersection of your two asymptotes. For x and y. You don't go and put in any other point. I beg you. This y you put in is your p and that's your q value. That's your p value. No, sorry. Other way around. That's your p-value for x, that's your q-value for y. That's p, that's q. That's the point you put in here. You don't insert any other point into that equation. We're almost there. we got a minute to go. A minute to win it. Sorry? By one point. By one point. This is South Africa. Stress, Baba. South Africa always put us under stress, even with cricket. The last one. Shh. The reflection. P of X. If P of X is H of X. See, H of X was equal to 4 over X minus 1 plus 2. They want the new equation of P of X. If P of X is H of X reflected about the X axis. Ref now, what do we know? Reflected about the X axis, Y sign changes. Yes or no? Do you guys know your rules of reflection? If you reflect something about the X axis, the Y sign changes. If you reflect something about the Y axis, the X sign changes. If you reflect something about the line Y equal X, the two swap over. Yes or no? Right, so here goes. So to reflect it about, what is the question? About the x-axis, so the y sign must change. So this is how you answer it in the exam. We're answering question number five. We're answering question number five. Minus px is equal to four over x minus one plus two. We're reflecting it about the x-axis, so the y sign must change. In your final answer, I'm asking you, can y ever be negative in your equation? No. So we divide by minus, divide by negative, divide by negative. Here comes your final answer. Here's your final answer. Therefore, P of X is equal to, divide by negative, minus 4 over X minus 1. Positive, divide by negative is a? Negative. And there's your final answer reflected about the X axis. It's not difficult, but many of you leave this out in the exam. You throw away marks for nothing. Basically, you're asking your teacher, please fail me. Ne? And here we go, guys. We're going for break. Uh, Hassanin, till what time are we breaking? How much time? C can we break till 1.30 for lunch? Um, we are locating about what? Uh, uh, about quarter past one? 30 minutes. No, 45. They're going to make salah and lunch. Okay, Let's so give it's it. 10 to 1 now. Yeah, till 1.30. 1 1.30 yeah. we resume. 1.30, we're giving you mercy now. 1.30, we will resume again. We're going for break, guys. We're going to come back after break and complete the functions. Right. We're going to go for lunch and salah. It is Thank now you. 10 to 1. We will resume at 1.30 on the mic. dot. Wait. Gentlemen. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This thing. One, two. One, two. We're going to resume at one, one two. One, two. This thing. One, two. Mr. Baker, you want to use this? No, you can use this also.
Guys. There are enough bins also. There are enough bins around. Please let us not litter. All right. Let us help the support staff also at the school. Uh, my SP students, there's 130 of you here. There's 130 of you after 130. Nobody leaves without my permission. Nobody. Nobody. Okay. Students, we're investing in your year. We are investing in you. 399 Rand today, 399 Rand tomorrow. 800 Rand. We are blessed that it's free of charge, all of you here. All right? So it's mindset. It is mindset, people. That is how you become successful. All right? So nobody leaves the school premises. Okay? You want to leave? You want to go to the shop? Come and ask me, I'm at the gate. All right. So uh, there's a burger for, e for each and every person there. 45 minutes, unwind. Uh, socialize. Let's social socialize with each other. We have, we've got Livingston here, we've got Spine Road, and SP. Three of the top schools, if not the best schools in the province. There we go. Thank you so much. All right, those students. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Class. Class. One more session to go. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Ah. Speaking of me for unequal words, isn't it actually not equal to zero? Yeah, not equal to zero, but it can't be less, so it's always greater than zero. But if you go into imaginary complex numbers, it's still not equal. Yeah, but it's not. I'm just asking. Yeah, imaginary complex non-real. Delta must be less than zero. But for unequal roots, you just got to keep it as delta greater according to what, how they want you to answer it for your national marketing memorandum. You just keep it as delta greater than zero. You can say delta greater than zero and, de and you can say also okay, delta Mr. not Kota, equal guys to zero. Mr. Kota, on the side. So I can tell I'm him yeah. his awesome. wife that he's actually working. You guys must come in.
Now it's on. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see, where's everybody else? Grade 11s. Mr. Kota, are you ready? We are all Take good, all away. good, all good. Welcome back, learners. Kindly settle down. You may sit down now. We will be proceeding now with, this, with the last half of the paper. Hope that you had time to stretch your legs and enjoy your lunch. Mr. Kota, it's over to you. Take the show away. Okay, guys, uh, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Hope you guys all enjoyed your lunch. This is what we call the graveyard session, the last session for the day that's going to pull us through right through until the end. I want to finish up with functions. I want to finish up with functions, and then I'll probably go on to number patterns. We'll do functions and number patterns, and then we'll carry over because we, there was a bit of a delay today. So we'll carry over with um, finance and probability first thing tomorrow morning, and then we'll start with paper two. But by the end of tomorrow, we would have completed everything. Okay, guys, we are back, we are back, we are back. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Right. Two questions, find the equation of H and they want the equation of the axis of symmetry with a positive gradient. Right, now, the previous one they asked you to sketch the graph. In this one the graph is given, the graph is given you need to find its equation. This is the reverse. They won't give you both scenarios in the exam. So you've got to learn both. Only one of the scenarios will be asked. Okay, so let's go. We're answering question number one. Those are your questions. Here's your answers. Answer for question number one. Now pay attention. Let's do it all together. Your standard formula. Put down your pens. Pay attention. H of X is equal to A over X minus P plus Q. So you start off with your standard formula. Right. That's your P value. That's your Q value. That's X. That's Y. Which alphabet are we looking for? A. A is never given. You're looking for A. So H of X is Y. So what's your Y? 5. Is equal to A over. What's your X? 4. Minus P. Minus 2. Plus Q. Minus 3. There we go. We're solving for A, guys, because we've got our P value. P is equal to 2. Q is equal to negative 3. So we got, we got P, we got Q. We got P, we got Q. We're only short of A. 
Now let's solve for A. That's a normal equation. 5 plus 3 is 8. Is equal to A over 4 minus 2 is 2. How do I get rid of this? I multiply that side by 2. I multiply that side by 2. 2 and 2 cancels. A is equal to 16. Right? 2 times 8 is 16. Find the equation of H. So therefore H of X is equal to A. We just found 16. Over X minus P minus P plus Q minus 3. And there we go. That is your final answer. Done. Show all calculations. Show all calculations. Now we are hoping that next year, remember this is the first time we're meeting each other. So now hopefully by next year we would have known each other much better. Greater acquainted with each other. And I hope to see every one of you in March. Next year when we kick off the March program. Some of you are going to drop out and don't drop out, please. I want to see every one of you here. The same lot that we have this year or next year or even more. Okay, so there we go. We found the equation of H. You guys can carry on with the second one already. The equation of the axis of symmetry with a positive gradient. The equation of the axis of symmetry with a positive gradient. I'm just going to answer question number two here on the top. With a positive gradient, Y is equal to plus X plus C. That's with a positive gradient. Which value do we use for X and Y to find C? 2 and negative 3, your P and your Q value. So minus 3 is equal to X, which is 2, plus C. C equals minus 3 minus 2, minus 5. So your final answer... Your final answer, y equals x minus 5. And there we go. That's it. That's it. Let's do the exponential. Let's do an exponential graph and then we'll end up with a parabola in a straight line. And definitely 100%, you're going to see a hyperbola in your exam with the shift. You're going to see the exponential and you're going to see the parabola in a straight line. 100%. Definite. It's coming out. Okay. So they give you that, they give you that, they tell you this is graph G, they call this point P, they give you a point here, T, they tell you that point there is 2 and 4, that's 0, that's your X axis and that's your Y axis. Right, let's ask you some questions on this. Let's go through all the humanly possible type of questions that they could ask you on the exponential graph. Right. Question number one. Question number one. G of X is equal to A over X. No, A to the power X. G of X is equal to A to the power X. Find A. Question number two, I want the coordinates of P. Question number three, the equation of H of X, if H of X is G of X reflected about the Y axis,
I want the equation of the asymptote of G and these are all exam questions all exam questions right um I want the range of G. Right, let's see, mark allocation. Three marks, two marks, two marks, one mark, one mark. One, two, four, six, and three, nine marks. This is your exponential. Then I'm going to give you a higher order exponential after this. Right, this is a standard exponential. This is a standard exponential. So P, we don't have its coordinates. Right. Now let me give you some quick uh, reviews. Uh, let's do some quick summary of exponential graphs, right? Because you're going to have an exponential graph going like that, goes through 0 and 1, and you're going to have an exponential graph going like that, also 0 and 1. This is a positive exponential. So let's say, for example, this is y equal 2 to the power x, and this is a negative exponential, and this one is y equals, say, a half to the power x. Now, when this is a... We're assuming that x is positive. If this is a whole number, it's a positive graph. If this is a fraction, it's a negative graph. Okay. What's common between the two graphs? I'm not yet answering these questions. Let's park this one side for a second. Right. All standard exponential graphs. Right. Number one, have only one y intercept 0 and 1 that means because any base to the power 0 is 1 any base to the power 0 whenever x is 0 your y is 1 so whenever x is 0 your y is 1 so it has only one y intercept 0 and 1 you need to write this down and you need to learn this because this is your summary i'm doing what i'm doing for you i'm writing your study notes for you so I'm summarizing all the notes that you have with regard to these graphs. I'm putting it in this point form. All you have to do is learn this for the exam. Have only one y-intercept. The x-axis, the x-axis is your asymptote. And they're going to ask you, what is the equation of your asymptote? y equals 0. The equation of your x-axis, y equals 0. Number three. A positive graph is known as an increasing function and a negative graph is known as a decreasing function. The domain for both graphs, what's the domain? Any x value will give you a y value. Any x value here will give me a y value. So x is an element of real numbers. Or you can say from negative infinity to positive infinity. What's the range for both the graphs? Remember, domain refers to x. Range refers to y. What's your y value? Which y values? No negative y values. Only your positive y values. So you're going to say y greater than 0, y is an element of real numbers, or you can write it in interval notation from 0 to positive infinity. Please learn this. Now obviously, after you've learned this, now you can answer all of that. This is your theory. 
Onlineers, are we there? We still logged in, logged on. Siviwet, Tomsana. Thanks, Lazarus, for your good comments. Excellent, guys. We've got lots of work. Please learn this, guys. Please learn that. That is your theory. We're now going to start cracking the questions. We're going to get full marks. So let's say we got, I'm just working out here, right? Say your paper is out of 100. Let's say you got full marks for your algebra. Your algebra was about 40 marks, or let's say even 35 marks. Your functions, your hyperbola with a shift in asymptotes was another, say, 10 marks. This graph here was another 9 marks. 35 plus 9 plus 10. You already got 54%. You haven't even tackled finance and probability and number patterns yet. So it's impossible to fail. It's impossible to fail. Just got to know your work. Okay, now I'm going to erase this. Now let's start answering the questions. Let's start answering the questions and let's get the full nine marks for this. Right, here goes, here goes, here goes, here goes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, so the answers. Question number one. G of X, so Y equals A to the power X. That's your standard formula. There's X, there's Y. So all we're going to do is we're going to say Y, 4 equals A to the power 2. We substitute point T. Now we need to solve for A. Therefore, A squared is equal to 4. Therefore, A is equal to the square root of 4. A is equal to 2. That means your graph is G of X is equal to 2 to the power X. And there we go. That's your equation of graph G. Simple three marks, step by step. Question number two. Come on, guys, by now you should tell me this. What's the coordinates of P? I gave it to you in your theory. It has only one y-intercept, and what's it? Zero and one. Very good. So P's coordinates is zero and one. They won't ask you why. They know you know why. They're just testing you whether you know your theory. Question number three. The equation of h of x is, a, if h of x is g of x reflected about the y-axis, so reflection about the y-axis, the x sign must change. x negative, when I say negative, means changes. So that means y equals 2 to the x, so h of x is equal to, if you reflect something about the y-axis, the x sign changes 2 to the power minus x. And there's your answer for question number 3. The equation of the asymptote. Now it's got one asymptote, your x-axis. So the answer to question number 4, your asymptote is your x-axis. And what is the equation of your x-axis? y equals 0. The equation of your asymptote, your x-axis is your asymptote. This graph will never touch your x-axis. And the equation of your x-axis is y equals 0. And what's the range? Let's answer question number 5 here. The range is all your y values greater than 0. y greater than 0, y is an element of real numbers. Or you can say from zero to positive infinity. And there we go. We got our full nine marks for this. Now we're going to do the last one. Okay, you want a higher order exponential. Let's throw you guys into the deep end. Here's your heavy weight coming up. Here's your heavy weight coming up. Onliners, are you still there? Are you still alive? Are you still alive and kicking? 
Oh, the keeper says yes. <laughs> Shamila Nyoni says yes. Here we go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, I'm just erasing the graph. I'm taking the new graph down. Let's see how sharp are you guys. Here's your higher order question coming up. So they give you a graph like that. They give you a graph like this. They give you an asymptote here. They tell you that is two. Then they give you a graph coming like this. They call it graph H. They tell you that point there is zero and minus eight. And they tell you that that point there is minus one and zero. Now they also give you part of the equation. They give you part of the equation. They tell you that h of x is equal to minus 2d x minus p plus q. Find d, p, q. Find the values of d, p, q for 8 marks. One question for 8 marks, find d, p, q. They could even make it 6 marks. Let's make it 6 marks. So basically, what are they asking you for, guys? They're asking you for the equation of that exponential graph. They're asking you for the equation of that exponential graph. Now, let's see what we have. Remember, if your answer is not in your equation, it's on your graph. If it's not on your graph, it has to be in your equation. It can't be anywhere else. Right. Pay attention. Let's do it together. This is my Q value. My asymptote is 2. So we already know we got Q. Q is 2. So therefore, H of X is equal to minus 2D X minus P plus 2. Where did the 2 come from? The 2 came from my asymptote. Are you all following? Right. Now pay attention. Put your pens down. We got two pairs of coordinates. Therefore, simultaneous equations. Watch here. Simultaneous equations because I got two payoffs and I got two unknowns, D and P. I need to find D. I need to find P. I got Q. So I'm now going to use the point minus 1 and 0. Minus 1 and 0. That's X. That's Y. So that's Y. 0 equals minus 2. D. X is minus 1. Minus P plus 2. Now, we need to either solve for D or solve for P. Let's, let's see. What are we going to do? Take the 2 over. So minus 2 D minus 1 minus P is equal to 0 minus 2 is minus 2. Yes or no? Now, we divide this side by negative 2. We divide that side by negative 2. What am I left with? d to the power minus 1 minus p is equal to 2 over 2 or minus 2 over negative 2 over negative 2 is 1. What do I do here? I need to solve either for d or p. Watch here. d to the power minus 1 minus p. The number 1, isn't that d to the power 0? Isn't any base to the power 0 1? There we go. d to the 0 is 1. D and D cancels out. What am I left with? Minus 1 minus P is equal to 0. Minus P is equal to 1. P is equal to minus 1. There we go. So we're done with P. We found Q. Q is 2. We found P minus 1. We're now only short of D. So now watch here. I'm moving over here to the side. So we use minus 1 and 0 there, the first point. Now we use the second point, 0 and minus 8. So now watch here. Minus 8, y equals minus 2, d, x is 0, minus minus 1, plus 1, 
plus 2. All we have to do now is solve for D. Minus 8 minus 2 minus 10 is equal to minus 2D to the power 0 plus 1 is 1. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, D is equal to, negative divide by negative is positive, 10 divided by 2 is 5. And there we go, we found D, P, and Q. What's your final equation? H of X is equal to minus 2 into D is 5, X minus minus 1 plus 1 plus 2. There we go. We found the equation of that graph using simultaneous equations. Learn. Learn. And that brings us to the end of expo uh, the exponential graph. So we did hyperbola with the shift in asymptotes. We did the straightforward exp ex um, exponential graph. And now we did this exponential with the shift in asymptotes. Let's do now, let's wrap these functions up with a parabola and a straight line. And like I said, 100% you're going to be seeing it in your exam. Onlineers, are we working? Are you still alive? Always here, Sipa Mandla. <laughs> hang in there, hang in there. Hang in there. Remember, maths is not for the faint of heart. It's easy, it's easy. But like uh, Mr. Baker said, this is a time to test your resilience, the time to test your grit. Every time your brain says, shut down, you need to tell it, shut up. <laughs> Let's go. Couple of years ago, couple of, I wanted to test my own grit. How much maths can I do in one weekend? And it was end of the year. And we had, I had to do a grade 12 workshop. Both of them were writing on the Monday. The grade 12s and the 11s. Mr. Baker, we had to do a grade 12 and 11 workshop in one weekend. We started on... Now, how do you combine paper 1, paper 2, grade 11 and 12 separately over two days? We worked through the night. So we started on Friday night. We started at 8 p.m. with the grade 12's maths paper 1. We started at 8 p.m. until 4 p.m. on Saturday morning with about 200 learners. The grade 12's went home to sleep. I went home for breakfast. I came home and we did a grade 11 workshop from nine, 8 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Grade 11's went home to sleep. I went home for supper. I came home. Grade 12s come back on Saturday night for maths paper 2. We start 8 p.m. at night. We finish at 4 o'clock in the morning. They go home to sleep. I go home for breakfast for the second day. I come back on Sunday morning, 9 o'clock. And we start with grade 11s. And we start at that time. We start from 9 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. We finish four papers, paper 1, paper 2, grade 11 and 12 in one weekend. And I'm still alive. I made it. If I can do it, you can do it. Come on. One more hour or two more hours is not going to kill you. Non-stop. You know, doing maths, what happens? You know, some of you go, go out with your friends on a Saturday night. You go out to skirt, right? <laughs> and there's a part of that night where your brain just wants to shut down and you start yawning and you see people's face starting to get bigger and smaller. Like some of you right now, your eyes are dialyzing. You're seeing my face getting bigger and smaller because your eyes, you're getting a bit zimzam right now. But th that happens at about 11 o'clock to about half past 12. After 1 o'clock, that tiredness is gone and you can boost for the entire night. That's math. You'll come to a threshold. Once you pass the threshold, that's when downloading starts happening. It's like going to gym. Guys are pumping iron. They pump to a certain point, which they call fatigue. 
Your muscles get sore. Can't do it. Oh, there's a word for it. Hytropophy. Yes, hytropophy. You get to a point. Now you, maths makes your brain go into a hytropophy. You get to a certain point where you can't do any more. And then your muscles want to scream. But once you pass that point, <laughs> you'll pump iron non-stop after that. You just go on and on and on. And that's when the building starts. After you pass the point of tiredness. And that's where we're at right now. Some of you, your minds, your concentration levels, your Ritalin levels, whatever levels are dropping. Ah, uh ah, -uh, this is the time you say, this is the time I need to focus. This is, because this is going to get me my distinction. Let's go. E enough motivation talk now. <laughs> Back to math. If my, if, my, if my screen can start clearing us a name. There we go. Bismillah. <laughs> this thing, it stresses me out. Let's go. I hate technology. Let's go back. Let's go. Take this diagram down. And I know many of you have seen this in the exam. So I'm going to give you a parabola. And I'm going to give you a straight line graph. Mm, let's see. No, let's not put it this way. Let's put it that way. There we go. Let's call this graph F. Let's call that graph G. I call that point A, B, D, E. And I give you another line coming from there to there. I call that point R. And I call that point T. Right. I tell you that F of X is equal to X squared minus 2X minus 8. I tell you g of x is equal to ax plus q. Right. Time to fight. Time to fight. Take the diagram down on liners. We can do this. 10,000 learners doing grade 11 math to crack this. One day you can tell your children, we sat in a math workshop for 10 hours, 20 hours in one weekend, and we survived it. So if your children tell you one day that they can't sit and do math for 30 minutes, slap them. <laughs> We're proud of you guys. I know you. This is new for you. It's the first time you're meeting me. It's the first time you're involved in a workshop. Trust me, when you get used to us and you get used to the system, it's going to be a walk in the park, Jurassic Park. Next year, you'll know. And trust me, tonight you're going to be tired. After, after this, you're going to be brain fried. Of course, you have to. Some of you are going to sleep tonight. You're going to start dreaming that parabolas and hyperbolas are chasing you in your sleep. Some of you are going to dream tonight that exponents are talking to you. When that happens, now you're learning. And you're going to come here tomorrow morning fresh. Bright and fresh on a Sunday morning. And we're going to Dala Mets until 4 o'clock tomorrow. What, you thought you were going to sleep this weekend? <laughs> you're joking. You got jokes. You got jokes. Right, let's go. Let's go. Right, question number one. I want the length of AB. Question number two. I want the coordinates of E. Question number three. I want A and Q. Find A and Q. Question number four. I want the maximum length of RT. Question 
Question number five. For which values of x is f of x greater than g of x? And where is f of x less than or equal to g of x? Let's give you some mark allocations here, guys. Ah, three marks, three marks, three marks, six marks. Two marks, two marks. Three, six, nine, fifteen, nineteen marks for the take. Right, we're all going to do it together. So I'll give you the, about a minute. I'm going to give you about a minute. That's point R, that's point T, that's point A, that's point B, that's point E, that's point D. Relax, guys. This is the last block of questions for functions. Hang in there. Let's look at our timing. I told you, before you know it, the day is over. It's five past two. We're into the last leg. By the time I'm done with this, it's about 20 past, 25 past two, after we go through all these questions. Then we crack number patterns. I think we end off, uh, we tap out on number patterns. I'll show you how quiet is it. It's so easy. You're going to get full marks. Arithmetic, geometric, and... Quad, uh, arithmetic, geometric, and quadratic. And we're done for today. Tomorrow morning, finance probability and paper two. Hamba gaatle. Salaamu alaikum. All right, let's go. The length of... Right. Okay. Many of you with functions... I know functions is your Moses. <laughs> I know you hate functions. But it's so easy. Listen to me. All you got to answer, you ask yourself two questions in your mind for any question, for any question in functions. Answer the question to what is, and then the second question you ask yourself in your brain, how. So, watch here. What is and how? The length of AB. What is AB? What is A? What is B? Okay, now that you know what it is, my two X intercepts, how do I find it? Let y equal to zero. Yes or no? The coordinates of E. What is E? What is E? My turning point. How do I find the turning point? A and Q. A is my gradient. Q is my y-intercept. How do I find it? Maximum length of RT. Top graph minus bottom graph. How do I find it? Right. Let's do it together, guys. Let's do it together. Let's answer question number one. I'm going to do the answers right here. Whoa. Let's do it here. Right. Let's answer question number one. What is A? What is B? My two X intercepts. Yes or no? And if the answer is not on my graph, it must be in my equation. So how do I find my X intercepts? You say let Y equal to zero. So x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. Grade 11's on liners. Are you following? x, x, 4, 2, minus plus. x is equal to 4 or x is equal to minus 2. So that means that must be minus 2 and that must be 4. Therefore, please read your question carefully. If they ask you for a's coordinates, you'll say minus 2 and 0. If they ask you for B's coordinates, you'll say 4 and 0. Yes or no? But they're asking you for A, B, the length. So 4 units plus 2 units. 4 plus 2, 6 units. Don't say 4 minus 2. Distance can't be negative. So 4 plus 2 is 6. There's it. You got your first three marks. You tell me that was difficult. No, man. Chips. Smarties, m &Ms. Right, question number two. Shh. The coordinates of E. What is E? E is my turning point. Right, so how do you find your turning point? Come and show you a trick. You know x is equal to minus b over 2a. Yes or no? Listen, 
I'm showing you something quiet. Normally at school, you take this here and you plug it back into the original to get your Y. Am I right? Am I right? Or am I talking German? I'm right, ne? Okay. But now I want to ask you a question. Didn't you ever ask yourself if there's a, if there's a formula for X, don't you think there must be a formula for Y? And come, I give you the formula. So you'll get your answer in coordinate form. Check here. 4ac minus b squared over 4a. You know from you know from your quadratic formula, x is equal to minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's your x value of your turning point, and if you square that, it's the y value of your turning point. You didn't know that. Right, let's go. Let's do it together. Minus B over 2A. Minus ABC. Minus minus 2 over 2 into 1. 4 into 1 into C minus 8. Minus B squared. Minus minus 2 squared. Over 4A is 1. So 2 over 2 is 1. Minus 32 minus 4. Minus 36 over 4 is minus 9. And there's your answer, 1 and minus 9. Done. You can do it like this, or if you still want to say x is equal to minus b over 2a, and then plug it back into your original, substitute it back, and find y, no problem. You're going to get the same answer. I'm just showing you a different strategy. After this, I'm going to show you a new way of doing a quadratic number pattern. You guys got three ways, uh, you guys got three formulas, am I right? To find A, B, and C, ne? You have to say 2A equals 3A plus B, A plus B plus C. How about I give you one formula? Even in total surface area. Total surface area, you got different formulas for different shapes, am I right? I got one formula you can use for all shapes. Right, I'll show it to you. Don't worry, we're getting there. We're getting there. Right. Ha, you know what I want to do? Ah, uh, hi. Okay, no, it's fine. You took this down. I hope you guys took this one down. I want to add on one more graph here <laughs> to make it even more fun. Right, watch this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something quiet for you now. We're gonna do another, I'm gonna add on another two marks, so we're gonna make it out of 21. But it's fine, don't, don't panic, don't stress, I got you. I got you. Number six, we're gonna make this out of 21. I'm gonna give you another graph here. I'm gonna give you a graph going like that. And this was FG, and this is graph H. And I'm going to give you a point here. RT, give me another value here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Let's call that point J. And I call that point J, 2, and 5. Right, I want the equation of H. The equation of H. And that will be another two marks, and that will give you 21. Okay, but don't worry about that right now. Let's, so we've done, we're done with that and we're done with that. Let's find A and Q. We're answering question number three. Here are our answers on the side. Right, what is A, what is Q? A is my gradient, Q is my y-intercept, am I right? Yes or no? Right. Remember the shortcut I showed you of finding the equation of a straight line. I said change y over keep x. So... There's four. This point here, the two graphs meet at what point? At what point do they meet? Minus eight. Yes or no? It's the same y-intercept for both the graphs. So therefore, g of x is equal to mx plus c. How did I teach you? How did I show you to find the m value? We change the sign of y over keep the sign of x. What is eight over four? 2. 
That's A, that's Q. Finish. Bada bing, bada boom. Done. There's another three marks. You already got nine. You already have nine. Okay. I want to jump to number six. So we're done with number one. We're done with number two. We're done with number three. We're going to get to four and five. I want to jump to number six. You know why? Because I want to show you a shortcut. I want to show you a hack. It's a standard hyperbola. So h of x is equal to a o over x. It's a standard hyperbola. Now come and show you a shortcut. What are we short of here, guys? A. Yes or no? Guys, grade 11s, what am I short of? Right, come and show you a shortcut here. You just multiply these two. 2 times 5. Here's your answer. H of x is equal to 10 over x. That's your final answer. That's it. For a standard hyperbola, you just multiply any one pair of coordinates. You get your A value. You with me? That's all. Done. Two times five. Two times five is ten. But you can only do it for a standard hyperbola. You can't do it for any other graph. Now, if you want to know why, let me just show you why. Because you know for a standard hyperbola, you don't need to take this down. You know y equals a over x. So there's y. Five equals a over x is two. We need to solve for a. So times two times two. Two and two cancels. A is equal to two times five is ten. Take that, put it back into there. H of x is equal to ten over x. Don't we get the same answer? So why not just multiply the two and work smart, not hard? Right, you don't need to write this. You don't need to write that. It's just something that I needed to show you. Okay, next question. Ah, I love the next one. The maximum length of RT. So RT is equal to your top graph minus your bottom graph. So RT, or your, so right. So your top graph is your parabola. X squared minus 2X minus 8 minus your bottom graph, T. Your bottom graph is your straight line. Uh, we found it, 2x minus 8. Remember, we're going to go there. We're going to change that to 2x minus 8. We're going to go back there. We're going to say 2x minus 8 is minus 2x minus 8. So RT is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8 minus 2x plus 8. I just removed the brackets. So RT is equal to x squared minus 2 minus 2 minus 4x plus 8 minus 8 gives me 0. But now you're stuck because now you got x, you got RT is equal to x squared minus 4x. So you got the answer in terms of x. They didn't give you the x value. If they told you if x was minus 6, no problem. Take minus 6 and put it into there. You'll get your answer. But they didn't give us. There's no x. How do we find the maximum value? We complete the square and we just read off the Q value. Watch, I'm showing you a trick. So all we're going to do, therefore maximum value, maximum value, RT, RT is equal to, let's complete the square. Remember the shortcut I taught you? Divide by 2, we're doing it on one side, minus that X value all squared. So what am I left with? X minus 2 all squared, minus 2 squared is 4. A into X minus P all squared plus Q. And there's your Q value. Therefore, your maximum value of the graph is equal to 4. The maximum length. The maximum length of that line is 4. You just read off that Q value.
I think we passed the tiredness stage. I think we're in back into focus stage. Don't you think? No. <laughs> I'm imagining. <laughs> All right. Okay, before we do, before we do, so we've done the maximum length of RT. Where is f of x greater than g of x? Okay, maybe, as a name, let's do a little bit of a, let's do something for them. Okay, just to tap out a little. You see, one day, <laughs> a little bit of comic relief, right? So, <laughs> forget about maths for now. So, one day there was little Johnny. So, <laughs> little, little Johnny was stout in class, right? So, anyway, the, the principal wanted to see how clever Johnny was. So he was in preschool, and Johnny was now, hey, he was hafal. Yo, he was stout. So anyway, the teacher knew, so the, the teacher don't ask Johnny any questions, because you know Johnny is going to give the toughest answers ever. She, Johnny is going to embarrass the teacher. So anyway, the principal walks into the class and says, right, I'm drawing this line. Who can expand on that line? Now he's asking grade ones. Yo, everybody keep quiet. Hey, Johnny, lights up. He picks up his hand. Hey, the teacher make like didn't see Johnny. Ignore Johnny, ask the other learner. One girl there picks up her hand. She says, okay, come. So the little girl comes up to the board and the little girl draws that. So the principal says, oh, okay, intelligent, clever. What is that? So the little girl says, that's the house on the land that you drew. Wow. What an answer. He, principal is amazed. You got the most intelligent grade ones ever. Anyway, Johnny now is getting irritated. Now his legs are jumping. And he's almost got ADD, you check. So he wants to answer now. So he's picking up. He's knocking. Ma'am, 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 ma'am. Can I go? Ma'am pretends she didn't check him. That's her name. So... I said, other boy there, you come here. And that boy comes up to the board and he's so excited and he draws that. And yo, the principal says, what is that? And that little boy says, that's the door on the house on the land that you drew. Yes. I said, I said that, that he was blown away. Hey, the teacher is now crapping cop now. Hey, you know what? Do I call Johnny up or is he going to mess this thing up here? No, 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 no. Let's the principal ask who else? Johnny is now crying. He's standing on, I think now the Ritalin wore off, you check. He's parking, he's stamping his feet, standing on the table, screaming. Please give me a chance, please. Teacher is still not comfortable. So she calls another girl and says, okay, you come up. That girl, you know, bouncily, joyfully goes and draws that. Okay, what is that? Hey, that is the sun that is shining on the house with the door on the land that you drew. Yo, that principal's amazed. That principal, he's about, hey, the, the uh, teacher is pushing the principal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As long as Johnny didn't come up. The principal says, no, 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 ma'am, just wait. There was a little boy there in the back that's crying. It's not entrana. It's not oh my God! They, the teacher puts her hands over her eyes. What is Johnny? Hey, Johnny is now excited, wiping the snot out, trying the ears. He's walking from the back, and you check with Johnny walking up to the board, confident. Yo, the teacher is now. She, her nerves are shot, and Johnny smiles. And Johnny comes up and says, "I know what to do." And Johnny draws that. And Johnny draws that. Aye, and the principal aye. asks, what is that? She says, that is my father in the bathroom bending over to pick up soap. Poor Johnny. Big trouble. Red card, bro. Red card. Red card. The teacher got fired, by the way. Anyway, we're back to math. You fired. We're back to math, guys. Leave Johnny alone. Let's get back to parabola, right? Don't ever show anybody the Johnny joke. Let's go back. Astaghfirullah. I'm going to hell. Yeah.
Right, let's go. Where is f of x greater than g of x? Let's see. Where is f of x? Now, what does greater mean? Greater means above, less than means below. So let's go, let's go, let's go. Guys, you have to have a little bit of fun in math, man. Seriously, you'll die if you don't enjoy what you're doing. Uh, guys, what happened to my pen? My pen disappeared. Well, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Right. Where is f of x greater than g of x? So where is it above? So where is f? Where is your parabola above your straight line? Your parabola is above for all your values of x there. And your parabola is above your straight line for all your values of x there. So it's all the values to the right of 4, so x greater than 4, or all the values to the left, your x values of, to the left of 0, for x less than 0. That's where your parabola is above your straight line. And that's your answer. That's your answer for 5 point. Let's call that 5.1 and 5.2. So that's 5.1. Let's do 5.2. Where is f of x less than or equal to? So if greater than means above, what does less than mean? Below, obviously. So where is your parabola underneath your straight line? Your parabola is underneath your straight line here. There we go. That's where it's underneath. For which values of x? Between 0 and 4. Between 0, between x equals 0 and x equals 4. So for x, 4, 0, between the two points. And there we go. That's your answer. Okay, let's get into number patterns. It's 25 past, I told you, even with the joke in between, we... On time, 25 past 2, on the dot. We're into our last session. Let's do number patterns. Let's finish number patterns. It's very easy. And that's going to take us, guys, to the end of the session. So we're almost at the end of the day. Hang in there. You've been here till for all this time. Another 15, 20 minutes. Not going to kill you. Onliners, are we alive? <laughs> Mulisa, you're killing it there. Uh, Johnny is dead. No, no, no. Johnny, Johnny, <laughs> Johnny died. <laughs> Johnny died. In Alilai, hate maningal. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Let's crack. Right. Number patterns. Number patterns. Right, three types of number patterns. One, two, three. Your arithmetic, your geometric, and your quadratic. Arithmetic has got a first common difference. Geometric has got a common ratio. And quadratic Tn equals An squared plus Bn plus C. Arithmetic Tn equals A plus N minus 1 times D. A, you know, is your first term. D is your common difference. N is a term and Tn is the value of that term. That's your general formula for arithmetic or for first difference. Another word for arithmetic is also called your linear pattern. Your geometric Tn equals AR to the power N minus 1. R is your common ratio. 
To get your common difference, T3 minus T2 equals T2 minus T1. That's the formula for calculating your common difference. For calculating your common ratio, T3 term 3 over term 2 must equal to term 2 over term 1. Don't stress, just take down these formulas. This is your mind map. And then we're going to start, I'm going to do one example, one example, one example, and game over. Our day is over. You can go and get your buravos and your ice and your ice cold coke for tonight and get ready for the rugby. Right. So let's start. Let's do a linear pattern, let's do a geometric pattern, and let's do a quadratic pattern. And we're done with number pattern. That means we've done the whole of algebra, we did the whole of functions, we did the whole of number patterns. Finance probability. Tomorrow. I might do finance in the morning and leave probability for last at the end and then we start with, I want to get into paper two as quick as we can tomorrow, especially trigs. And Euclidean. Triggs is a lot of marks. It's a third of your paper. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Onliners, let's get started. Right, let's make up a number pattern. Right, here goes. You given the number pattern, negative two, negative six, Negative 10, blah, 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 blah. Question number one, extend by two terms. If the pattern continues, find Tn, the general expression. Number three, Find the 20th term and which term in the pattern, which term in the pattern is equal to minus 96. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now the first thing we do, we know from negative 2 to get to negative 6 is negative 4, yes or no? From negative 6 to negative 10 is negative 4. So to extend by two terms, what do you think your next two terms are going to be? Minus 10, minus 14, minus 18. So the answer for my first question is minus 14 and negative 18. Are we all okay with that? Can I put a tick? We all understand how we got that, right? Easy. Now, it's a, it's a common first difference. You can see it's a common first difference. So find Tn. Let's answer question number two. Find Tn, the general expression. So Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 times D. So Tn is equal to A is my first term, minus 2, plus N minus 1. What's my common difference? What did I find my common difference to be? Minus 4, good. So Tn is equal to minus 2. Let's multiply this out. Minus 4n, negative times negative is a positive, 4 times 1 is 4. So Tn is equal to minus 4n, minus 2 plus 4 is plus 2. And there we go, you get yourself your next 3 marks. So your first question was 2 marks, this was 3 marks, that was 3 marks, and that was 3 marks. 3, 6, 9, 11 marks on this question. In fact, after this one, I'll just add on one more question. I'll add on a higher order question with regard to this. Like the worst case that you could see under arithmetic. Right, find the 20th term. Let's answer question number three, guys. So we know that Tn is equal to minus 4n plus 2. We want the 20th term. So T20 is equal to minus 4 into 20 plus 2. 
Minus 4 times 20, minus 80. Minus 80 plus 2, minus 78. And that's your final answer. Answer to question number 4. Which term is equal to minus 96? So minus 4n plus 2 is equal to minus 96. Which term? Whenever they ask you for which term, you're looking for n. Whenever they ask you which term, they are looking for n. So minus 4n is equal to minus 96 minus 2 is minus 98. n equals 98 over 4. n is equal to 98 divided by 4. No, by 4. 98 divided by 4. And we get 24 and a half. So the 25th term. is equal to 96, approximately. That's why we make this curly equal to sine. Approximately. The 25th term. There we go. Learn. This is your arithmetic pattern. Now let's ask you one higher order question. On arithmetic, and we're done with arithmetic, then we're going to go into geometric, and then quadratic, and then we are done. Guys, we're at the end now. You guys should be so proud of yourselves, honestly. Guys, I've been doing maths the entire day, and you're still alive. Well done. Three, 3x minus 4, 4x minus 3, and 7x minus 6 are the first three terms of a, of a linear pattern, of a linear or arithmetic pattern. Find the 20th term for six marks. This is a higher order question. Higher order grade 11. Now it's very easy. Very, very easy. Right. Remember for arithmetic, we had two, uh, we had two formulas. Tn equals a plus n minus 1 times d. And then to find d, listen, to find your common difference because it's arithmetic, what did we have? T3 minus T2 equal T2 minus T1. Yes or no? So we solve for x. Let's do it. 7x, 7x minus 6, term 3, minus term 2, 4x minus 3 in brackets is equal to 4x minus 3, minus 3x minus 4. We're going to solve for x. 7x minus 6 minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 4x minus 3 minus 3x plus 4. 7x minus 4x, 3x minus 3 is equal to x plus 1. 3x minus x, 2x is equal to 1 plus 3 is 4. x is equal to 2. There we go. We solve for x. Now we need the pattern. So take the 2 and put it into there. Put the 2 here. Put the 2 there. Put the 2 there. So what do you get? What's your pattern? 3 times 2 is how much? 6. Minus 4 is 2. 4 times 2 is how much? 8. Minus 3 is 5. 7 times 2 is 14. Minus 6 is 8. So that means my pattern is 2, 5, 8. They want the 20th term. So T20 is equal to A plus 20 minus 1 times D. T20 is equal to A is 2 plus 20 minus 1 is 19. What's my common difference here? 3. 
19 times 3, 57 plus 2, your answer is 59. And there we go, we're done. Agreed. Lovely. We're almost there. We now let's do a geometric pattern. Let's do a geometric pattern. Let's do a geometric pattern. This was arithmetic. Let's do a geometric. Guys, we're almost at the end. Hang in there. We're doing geometric quadratic and it's time to go home. So let's say 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, 1 over 16, blah, 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 blah. Question number 1, extend by two terms. Yeah, we're almost there, guys. You guys are breaking your own records. How many of you did so much maths in one day in your life? One, two, three. Oh, the hands are coming up. Mashallah. Well done. Hey, Mashallah. Right, let's go. Let's go. Extend by two terms. Find Tn, the general expression. Uh, find the tenth term. And which term in the series or in the sequence is equal to 1 over... four oh nine six. Right, here goes. Shh. Right. So now we know this is geometric. Remember that divided by that. A, ha a quarter divided by a half is equal to a half. So this multiplied by a half gives me that. Not two times a half. Multiply by a half will give me that. Multiply by a half will give me that. Multiply by a half to give me 1 over 16 times 2 is 32. And then the next term times a half is 1 over 64. Yes or no? We extended by two terms. 1 over 32, 1 over 64. Agreed? Right. Find Tn. This is geometric. Because we're multiplying by a half. We're not adding a common difference. So Tn is equal to AR to the power N minus 1. Tn is equal to A, a half. R is also a half to the power N minus 1. And there we go, that's your final answer. You can't multiply this inside there because the N minus 1 belongs to what's in the brackets, not what's outside. That's actually a coefficient, that's the base, that's the power. Right. Find the tenth term. Question number three. This is question number two. Question number three, T10 is equal to a half into a half to the power 10 minus 1, which is a half into a half to the power 9. Your final answer. One over one o two four. That's question number three. We're almost there. We're almost there. We only got question number four to do. We got the quadratic pattern. We're on time. It's got it to three. I told you, it's, we're at the end, guys. We are at the end. We will finish on three at three o'clock on the dot. Okay. So kudos to you. Ten brownie points for sitting the whole day doing math.
Trust me, tonight you're going to miss today. You're going to sit back and think, yo, did I just sit the whole day and do math? And guys, do me a favor. Tonight when you're watching the rugby, I want you to take your math notes and read through it. I just want you to check. You, you can take a, a, a try or a penalty. The rest of the match, you don't need to watch. You revise today's notes while you're watching the rugby tonight. So even if you're sitting with Prasa and whatever, take out your K-Way notes and revise. Otherwise, you're going to forget everything. It ain't happening, I know. Right. Which term is equal to? Let's do the last one. Last one. Whew, here we go. So Tn was equal to a half into a half to the power n minus 1. Which term is that? So a half into a half to the power n minus 1 is equal to 1 over 4096. Times this side by 2, times that side by 2, that 2 and that 2 will cancel. A half to the power n minus 1 is equal to 1 times 2 is 2 over 4096. So a half to the power n minus 1 is equal to 2. So it's 1 over 204. No. Oh, it's a bit silly. 1024? 2048. Yeah, it's 1 over 2048. Now, it's an exponential equation, so we need to solve for n in the power. So we're going to go a half to the power n minus 1 is equal to a half to the power. Nope. Two to the power eleven is two o four eight. So now the half and the half cancels out. N minus one is equal to eleven. N is equal to twelve. Therefore, the twelfth term is equal to one over four o nine six. There we go, and that's the answer. Almost there, almost there, the last one. So we did arithmetic, we did geometry. Learn. And we're on to the last one, the quadratic number pattern. Now, let's have some fun. Right, maths is always fun. Okay, so let's go. Watch this. Let's make up a number pattern here. Right. The quadratic number pattern. So I'll tell you 2, 12, 28, 50. Right. Extend by... Okay, let's clear all that out. Take that down. Right, question number one. Extend by two terms. Find Tn, the general expression. Find the twentieth term. Which term in the sequence is equal to, I don't know, give me any number, 1,246. Right, let's do it. So to extend by two terms, guys, we know from 2 to get to 12. 12 minus 2 is how much? 10. 28 minus 12 is how much? 16. 50 minus 28 is how much? 22. Okay, I'm asking you, is there a common first difference here? Is there a common first difference? No. 
Let's go one difference lower. 16 minus 10 is how much? 6. 22 minus 16 is 6. That means we're going to start from the bottom going up. So 22 plus 6, 666, the devil in math. 22 plus 6 is how much? 28. 50 plus 28 is how much? 78. 28 plus 6 is how much? 34. 78 plus 34 is 112. So 78 and 112, we've extended by two terms. Right. Are we all okay there? Onlineers, we're almost there. We're almost there, guys. Here goes. So we extended by two terms. Find Tn. Now you guys use the formula 2a equals your second difference. Am I right? Then on this line you say 3a plus b is equal to your, fir uh, your first difference. And then you're going to say a plus b plus c is equal to your first term. Then you guys are going to start working from here up. So you're going to say 2a equals 6. A is equal to 6 over 2 is 3. Then you're going to say 3A plus B is equal to 10. 3 into 3 plus B is equal to 10. B is equal to 10 minus 9 is 1. Then you're going to say A plus B plus C is equal to 2. 3 plus 1 plus C is equal to 2. 4 plus C is equal to 2. C is equal to minus 2. Then you're going to say TN equals AN squared plus BN plus C. So Tn equals An squared, 1n squared plus Bn minus 2n, no, no, 3n squared, thank you, 3n squared plus n minus 2, thank you, and there we go. So you got three different formulas. Can I teach you a new formula? You might not, listen, if you guys want to use it, you use it. Otherwise, you can just use it to check. You know when you finish the paper in your, your three-hour paper in one and a half hours, in your second one and a half hours when you want to check your work and you want to check it using a different angle, then maybe try a different way. Right. I'm, I'm not forcing you to use my way. You want to use this way, use it. Come and show you a Kwai way. Check this one out. I know it's going to be a bit, the first time you see an, uh, an equation, it seems a bit hectic, but it's easy, man. I'll show it to you. Now, I'm going to get the same answer like this. Remember, no matter which way we do it, whether I do it your way or we do it my way, we still have to get the same answer. Am I right? Okay. So let's go. Tn is equal to term 1 plus n minus 1 times your first difference plus n minus 1, n minus 2 over 2 times your second difference. And here's one formula you can use instead of three different formulas. Here's one formula and we're going to get the same answer. And I'll show you how easy is it to substitute. Quine. So, this is method number two. Method two. Right. So, let's do it together. Tn is equal to, what's your first term? Two. Right? Means that we're not using this method anymore. I'm just showing you a different way, man. Relax. Hold your horses. Come your farm. Right. Plus, n minus one. What's your first difference? Ten plus n minus 1, n minus 2 would be n squared minus 3n plus 2 over 2. My second difference is 6. So 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 three times. Here goes. All we do is remove the brackets, collect like terms. Bada bing, bada boom. We're going to get the same answer. 2 plus 10 times n, 10n minus 10 plus, now I'm going to multiply this inside, I'm going to get 3n squared minus 9n plus 
six. Here's the moment of truth. Tn is equal to 3n squared. Plus 10n minus 9n is plus 1n. 2 minus 10 is minus 8. Minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2. Game over. We get the same answer. Matisquine? Now, obviously, which term is equal to 1, 2, 4, 6? Which term is equal? Now that we got our general term, now that we got our general term, which term is equal to 1, 2, 4, 6? So all you're going to do, I'm answering question number four here. This is the last one we're doing before we go home. Number four, Tn equals three. No, no, we had to do the 20th term, right? Question three we didn't do. Three n squared plus n minus two. I want the twentieth term, so t twenty is equal to three into twenty squared plus twenty minus two. Twenty squared is four hundred times three is one thousand two hundred plus twenty minus two. That's one thousand two hundred and eighteen. There's your final answer. T twenty is one two one eight. And the last one, here, we're at the finish line now, guys. So, you guys are only going to be talking math tonight. Dreaming math, eating math. How nga? Tn equal 3n squared plus n minus 2. Which term is that? So 3n squared plus n minus 2 is equal to 1, 2, 4, 6. 3n squared plus n minus 2 minus 1, 2, 4, 6 equals 0. 3n squared plus n minus 1, 2, 4, 8 equals 0. We're now going to factorize n will equal to or n will equal to we'll just factorize it you can use the quadratic formula you can use the quadratic formula or those of you that got the silver calculator the silver fx 991 who's got it here it factorizes for you one learner has got it right you can check on your those of you who got an android you can get it onto your phone as well right so you just go mode and then we can go ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to go 3 equals plus 1 equals. And then minus 1, 2, 4, 8 equals equals. I get minus 20, 56. Minus 20, 56. Or I get 20, 23. So which term? N, your number of terms can't be negative. You can't get a negative number of terms. We just round this one up. Therefore, the 20th term is equal to 1, 2, 4, 6. Go home. <laughs> no, don't go home. Just wait. Okay, boys and girls. Woo, we have come to the end of day one. I told you guys the end was in sight, didn't I? Jazakallah all for attending. Lots of love from Kway, from Okaf, from South Peninsula, Mr. Baker. Just like to thank all the schools, all the learners that have joined us here for paper one, tomorrow, paper two. Asanain, any possibility that we can start tomorrow at 8.30? Yeah, why didn't you have a sleepover? Why didn't no, no, you have no, a not sleepover? A... Guys, what do you guys say 8.30 tomorrow, not 9 o'clock? How many of you say you'll make it 8.30 tomorrow? Oh, all right, 9 o'clock it is. That's only 10%. 9 o'clock it is. Some of you are going, hey, no babalas. You make sure you come here. Awake. Onliners, thanks very much. Thank you very much, and we One, shall see you. Two.
would like to thank all of uh, you, the grade 11 learners, um, the learners of South Peninsula High. You guys were awesome. You were high energy. You kept Mr. Kota in uh, check. You schooled him a little bit because you guys are that good. So thank you for being here, your energy, your enthusiasm. We're just going to request before you leave, I know you're tired, if we can just get everyone uh, in front of the OCAV banner, would like to do a group photo. We'll appreciate you. And then tomorrow we'll see you bright and early for the grade, um, the grade 11, maths paper 2, bright and early. Uh, we'll have less bloat tomorrow. We'll start on time. I think we'll start a little bit early. We'll start probably by 10 to 9, so we can gain some ground that we lost. So we do apologize for the long sermons that we had this morning, uh, but we do appreciate your indulgence. Thank you so much. Mr. Kota, you are on fire, man. What's that? What are you drinking here? Is, is this like here's, rocket here's fuel? Here's the second round going here. This here's ethanol. You know, kids, please stay away from this. Might just become a maths genius. Mr. Baker, we're going to pass the mic over to you. Your thoughts on the session today? Only one word to describe it. Wow. And I'm sure students will agree with me. How was today's session? No, 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 no. Let's applaud Mr. Kota for this program. Well done. All right. Students, um, I said this earlier to you. I said this earlier to you. We've given you a taste of what matric is about. I mentioned to a boy at the back there, he went to the bathroom, and I said to you, young man, if you can sit for six to eight hours, whether it's your business studies or your physical sciences or your English, if you can sit for eight hours next year on one, then you are going to do well at the end of the year. So this is a taste of what matric is like. Don't uh, listen to the maths lit people. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. They want to give you the impression that things are hunky-dory and that you just fly through matric. Many of them are struggling. Many of them. So, students, we're not going to hold you up any longer. Firstly, let us just take this opportunity to thank Mr. Kota, coming all the way from Gauteng, to come and have this crash workshop with our grade 11 students. I want to commend and thank Mr. Fabian from Spine Road. Spine Road students, well done. Thank you very much for being here, Spine Road. And then we have Livingston also here, that, that lady from Livingston. Resilience, grit, well done, Livingston. And then to the South Peninsula community, I told you I've got one year to go, one year. You're going to give me my 100% pass, and you are going to give me my 95% bachelor rate. I want a 95% bachelor rate. And I'm sure that Mr. Fairburn, I don't know whether he has mentioned it to the spinal students, but I'm sure he's going to push you people next year because I think he'll want his best results from the matrix, the 2024 matrix class next year. Students, um, there's rugby this evening, and there's, there's some preparation work to be done for that. Also, maybe two or three hours of sleep. All that we want from you now is all of you. All of you just to come to the front. We just want a picture with a sponsor. When we take care of each other, wonderful things happen. Children thrive, the elderly rejoice, and communities celebrate. OCAF South Africa, a charitable WACAF organization, makes it easy to share the care. All donations are ploughed into Sharia compliant investments, while the fruits support a wide variety of charitable causes. Visit OCAFSA.org.za to discover how your WACAF can bless our community with a